Welcome back, everybody. This is the Hop Nation USA podcast. This is episode 224, and this is one of your hosts, Adam. Thank you for joining us on our beer journey. I think I'm going to try that that out a little bit. 220 some episodes. We got to have a tagline. You, like you, that. Fi- you finally found yourself an intro. I think so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Don't worry. I'll forget it for next week. No, that's a, that's fine because it won't be your intro next week. Ah, so I'll have to forget about it next week and then come back in two weeks and remember. Yes. I'll have to write that down. <laughs> <laughs> but that, of course, is my co-host, Steve. Hello. He is happy to be here. Yes. Uh, and here is not here. We are not in Hop Nation Central. We are out and about. Uh, unfortunately, I believe it is safe to say that the Spicy Boy Summer Revenge Tour is officially concluded. Yes. Uh, but now we're on to something else. The fall of Adam, remember? It is the fall of Adam. Because that started at Necromancer where you got to start drinking more lagers. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. You're getting your crispy boys in. <laughs> Relatable. <laughs> yes, it is. And that third voice is the voice of the brewery that we are visiting on this episode. We are here live and on location at East End Brewing. Hello, hello. It Welcome. Has, it has been a long time coming, and we are finally here. And that voice is Scott, the owner and proprietor of East End Brewing. Scott, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Good it is. Here. Like I said, it has been a long time coming. You have been on our show before, yeah, yeah. Um, but you have not been here as a pure representative of East End Brewing. Uh, I believe it was episode 202 uh, you were wow. on here previously. You have an encyclopedic knowledge of uh, uh, your episode guests, or are you prepared? I, actually, it was on the agenda. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> right. The second one, prepared. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. And uh, that's the highlight of my preparedness. After that, all bets are off. <laughs> but yes, uh, Scott was on talking about the uh, the Brewers Guild here in Pittsburgh, uh, and now he is here to talk East End Brewing. Yes, Very yeah, good. all East End all the time. This is all the whole, all the whole episode. Can't stop, won't stop. Yeah, I don't think I could if I. <laughs> but yes, uh, we are here. We're here to drink some of Scott's beers, and I believe now would be a good time to start getting in on that. What are we drinking first? What is the first beer we're going to be having here, Scott? Uh, we're going to do a uh, glass of our uh, Patonka Pills. This is a, uh, a Pilsner that we've been working on Pilsner for those who have been following along with our neighborhood beer series, have probably seen a few Pilsners pop up in that. We've been refining and refining and further refining our Pilsner recipe. Uh, and this is one that we uh, we released as a separate beer from that series um, for the Patonka Tonk, which is an oddly named music festival that happens in Shenley Park. Mm. Really fantastic event. So we brewed a beer for that and did the did the beer service at that just absolutely banging outdoor music festival. <laughs> um, I highly recommend checking it out. It'll be back at it in May. But, yeah, it's the Patonka Pills. All right. Right on. And uh, you want to talk a little bit about how this is served? I, I'm taking a look at the tap, and it is not your usual tap setup. What's going on there? Yeah, it's a, uh, a bit of an oddball on the, on the wall. Uh, as our lineup here, we've got a side pool tap, and this is a uh, traditional uh, method of uh, Pilsner service from Czechoslovakia. So that tap, in addition to having some weird adapters that, <laughs> that are involved to make it stick out that far in the wall, unfortunately, it has this uh, faucet that, if you were to be looking down on it, rotates like the, like the hands of a clock. So when it's at the 9 o'clock or a 3 o'clock position, it's fully closed. When it's at 6, it's wide open. And the cool part about it is that you can throttle it. So Ah, you can do uh, straight foam as at, if you hold it at like 830. (laughs) Uh, You can do a crisp pour uh, at six o'clock, which will just give you all liquid. Uh, It's a really uh, impressive piece of hardware and it's all like shiny and stainless and, you know, makes a a nerd like me happy (laughs) just to uh, look at it. Once once this segment is over, I'm going to go behind the bar and I'm going to check it out. (laughs) Ah, (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, check, let's check pour. Check <laughs> <laughs> let's pour it up, and then we'll yes. get to that later. <laughs> All right. Let's put some in a glass. All right. I'm sure people can speak about the history of the pour more eloquently than I, but these milk pours are not a new a new thing in the beer world. Mm-hmm. 
you know, the Czechs have been doing this for a couple hundred years, and it's often offered as a uh, as a after you pay your bill. Here's another like you know little treat from the bartender, often given as as you know gratis to a to a to a kind guest. Or where I see more of a space for it is you're with a group of five people. You don't really want another beer, mm -hmm. but everybody else wants another beer, and you want to be able to ride along. Right, um, right. It's a nice, uh, it's a nice sort of uh, placebo for you. Mm. <laughs> so, it's my understanding uh, uh, with with the milk pour, what, what what we have here was, isn't there supposed to be something with the aroma as well? You're supposed to be able to get more of the nose of the beer too. Yeah, it's really a different experience. I mean, that wet foam is so. Don't sleep on it, right? Mm -hmm. I've heard people say that that yeah, it's supposed to be drank down in one gulp, but that's. <laughs> Not necessarily a way I savor, you know, a pint of anything, even if it's mostly foam. But it, it has a different, it has a softness about it, obviously. Mm -hmm. the, the foam comes across sweeter than the beer yeah. does to it me. Does. And it's very aromatic. Like, I, I, you know, I'll pour that for somebody in here. Usually a lot of, like, scowled looks from across the room. People <laughs> love to get angry about a glass of foam. Uh, but it starts a great conversation and and gets people understanding what is that? Why are you doing that? What is what is the? Mm. Uh, and this is one of like three traditional pours. You can do a uh, a crisp pour, which is all liquid with a foam cap on top. You can do the milk pour, and then there's like a a middling one that's it's a, a little little column A, little column B. Mm, okay. And those are the the three three pours. So we actually don't have that on our menu right now. But if someone comes in and asks for one, and we have a bartender that happens to know what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, they would pour it for them, uh, but probably going to be rolling this out in the next uh, next couple of weeks once we get a little staff training on right. awesome. on what this is and how it how it works and how you how you overcome the the, the primal urge to open the faucet <laughs> all the way so it won't pour foam because that's that's the hardest part. As you saw, I you know had the had the the mis pour. Yes, my my brain doesn't want to doesn't want to pour a glass of foam. Uh, all those years of training, yeah, yeah. Repetition. What do you do? Don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever been to a bar and seen a very novice bartender with a standard faucet? They'll right. like, you know, pull some people will like pull it a little bit open and it's just like stop. stop. <laughs> Don't do that. Please stop. Just open the faucet. Put the beer in the glass. Just, just give it to me. close it. Give it's it just me. a I'll light switch. It. It's not a dimmer. It's right. a light switch. Um, but this one's a dimmer. Right. Yes. So Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. So yeah, when you poured it up, you basically gave us cylinders of white foam. Yep. Just full of milk. That's yeah. fine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but throughout, through, while you're explaining it, I tried to do like three different sips. So I took a sip of just foam. Yeah. And then a sip of foam and beer kind of combined. Right. And then I tried to do one that was just the beer. Right. So, yeah. and I think And you right. see, as it settles out, it gets to, you know, you end up with a about a third, maybe a little bit, a little bit more than a third of a pint is mm -hmm. how it how it shakes out, priced accordingly. So right. you're not you're not paying for a full yeah yeah. Full <laughs> yeah. Just, just to put that, <laughs> stop the rage. It's okay. It's beer. You can be happy unless you're um, at full pint. Then you're paying a full pint for a half pint. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. oh uh, boy! Oh boy! Singularity here. We just uh, <laughs> folded in on ourselves. Um, but but I'm sorry. So you were saying yeah you had uh, you had those those three. Yeah. Taste experiences. Yeah. So, and you're exactly right. Like the foam is a little bit sweeter. Yeah. And I think, I think personally, from what I just experienced, the best way is maybe to do like the half foam, half beer as yeah. you can. Yeah. And just get like the full range because it, it right. does taste right. a little sweeter than the beer itself, but mm -hmm. you yeah. get like a full range of the entire. Yeah. And so it's that first, you know, t typically I decide if I like a beer based on the last sip I pull out of the pint, right? Mm -hmm. That's where I'm like, am I going to get another one of these? Yeah. It's my, you <laughs> yeah. know, or am I going to get something or try something different? Am I, if I really, am I really like enchanted with that last <laughs> experience there? Am I going to, boy, I, there's a lot of other things here, but I, boy, I want to have that again, that last sip mm -hmm. is is definitive for me mm -hmm. and often that's when the beer is a little warmer more of its sins are revealed if there's, <laughs> if there's any trouble with the beer there's no more hiding uh, at that right. point it's all everything's out and uh and and on the table and then the you know in a beer like this the sharp contrast is you put another one down in front of you and that first sip is going to taste radically different again mm -hmm. yeah uh, uh, so. uh let's talk a little bit about the petanque itself yeah i'm noticing there's a oh, there's it's a little more spicy, I would say, than mm -hmm. most pilsners. Yeah, yeah, we've got a we've got some dry hopping in this mm -hmm. one that presents itself. We uh, the previous iterations, I think the neighborhood beers were West End and um, blanking on the other one. Was it New Homestead? It's a green green can 
you know, there was a time when I could, you know, recite <laughs> like 20 neighborhoods and 20 beer styles, and <laughs> that, but, but we're up, we're up. You're way past 50 past now. 50 so. Yeah. now. So, yeah, and I'm way past 50, so the brain cells are, <laughs> are, are, are competing for, uh, <laughs> for retirement. Yeah, we've, we've, uh, we've played around a lot with this, with this beer over these uh, various iterations, and uh, we've done some, some with some rice to go to a, uh, a more American tradition mm -hmm. to see what that does for a Pilsner. And the next iteration we have actually has some, some, uh, some rice in the mix, but the changes are so subtle, and it's like you're tasting it out of the tank you don't really even know until the beer is on service mm -hmm. and you can taste it through the same equipment under the same conditions because it's such such subtlety you're chasing these tiny tiny little incremental adjustments i think we'll continue to tweak it but ultimately the next the next iteration of this beer will come out under the name everyday pills um which is oh, okay. which is our beer that we will have here Every, Every day. day. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> did the math. <laughs> Extra beer in your class. For that. Uh, so. Awesome. Well, let's move on and just talk about what's been going on at East End, especially since you know we talked to you last. And one of the big yeah. things, I, I don't know if you necessarily mentioned it by name on the episode. It might have been like an off, an off uh, microphone it's thing. It's on the cutting room floor. Yeah. 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 But you had mentioned that you were opening full service kitchen here at East End. Yep. And you said that you were going to call it East End Chewing. Yeah. And that's a for sure reality now. That is our <laughs> reality. Yeah. There's a uh, there's there's um, paint on the wall and pizza boxes that are custom uh, custom printed to prove that. Uh, yeah. that no yes, take backs. We've actually <laughs> made that that dumb dumbass joke into uh, into into our reality here. Yeah. My wife says uh, that I'm really not that interested in beer. I just won't need like a format to make dumb jokes for long periods. <laughs> Time. Why do you think we have a podcast? And yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but the the irony is this this one was her idea. She gets credit ah, for this one. So, okay. so apparently, you know, my disease has rubbed off <laughs> after twenty five six years of marriage. So yeah, so she gets she gets credit for the uh, the East End chewing dumb jokes. Um, <laughs> but yeah, our uh, our previous restaurant partners, Larder. That's Justin. Severino and, and Hillary Prescott of Cure and Salty Pork Bits and, and Morcia, um, some top food producers in our in our city here. Mm -hmm. uh, they were our partners in here and operated a separate business in our tap room. I am perhaps the world's most reluctant restaurateur, so I was never really wanting to deal with complexity and the I didn't really have interest in the culinary world. Beer was plenty enough for me to, to, <laughs> to be overwhelmed by. Um, but it just made sense when they closed up uh, in during during like the, the the height of COVID times, when the first shutdown happened, the menu wasn't really built for takeout. It wasn't really something that could work for curbside. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, we bought all of the kitchen equipment out from them. Great time to buy buy into a restaurant. In the <laughs> <of the pandemic. laughs> uh, uh, but now we run it ourselves, and as uh, as East End Chewing, we have Cheryl Johnson, our uh, our kitchen manager. I'm gesturing over there like she's in the room. <laughs> uh, it's Monday. We're closed today, right? You know? But that's where she generally is over there in the kitchen, because um, this is a visual medium. Mm, of right? course, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. You see by the air quotes and the and the, uh, and the eye rolls. They're all coming across. I, I have done that more times yeah. than I care to count over. <laughs> <laughs> hey, just for the listener, look, if you come into East End and if you're standing at the bar, Scott is signaling to the left of the bar. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm behind the bar. You're yeah. in front of the bar. Yeah. Ooh, I just had a good idea. What? Hop Nation USA, the walking tour. <laughs> yeah. We can walk you through all the breweries. There you go. We can do a little video walkthrough if you want. Yeah. Google, we're coming walkthrough. after you. Just hear the different sounds. It's not as exciting. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, so Cheryl's been phenomenal. You know, I was thinking that I would be getting uh, lots of traumatic calls at all days of uh, hours of the day and night about kitchen problems and, and everything. And Cheryl just runs it. She just... Just go. Just runs it. And her approach to the kitchen has been to sort of match what we're doing at the brewery, mm. which is, you know, we're releasing a... A beer about every week with the neighborhood beer series. Mm -hmm. We had some 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 changes to that timing during the last uh, year and a half, as you might imagine. But we're putting out a essentially releasing a neighborhood beer uh, these days every one to two weeks. Mm -hmm. And Cheryl's doing a brand new pizza 
every week. So we'd like to say we have any kind of pizza you would like to have here as long as it's one of the three being offered at, <laughs> at a given time, the cheese pizza, pepperoni pizza, and a pizza of the week. <laughs> so can you talk about the, the pizza of the week, how that comes to be? Does that correspond directly with the beer? Is just however, you know, whatever um, is, you know. Insp- like, like with beer, the inspiration can come from anywhere. It can come from something happening on the brew side. It can come from actually for, for the week of Batonka Tonk when we had that beer release, one of the, the headliners for Patonka Tonk, Son Rompe Para. I hope I said the name close to right. Um, you can scan around on our Instagram <laughs> sure. looking for it, but they are a, uh, a band out of Mexico City, kind of like Cumbia and Marimba and Punk Rock, all sort of oh, all into one. Okay, all right. And they played on our patio, so she did a, a Chili Rellenos pizza, Ooh, uh, nice. which was fantastic. Yeah. You know, uh, for, <laughs> for Picklesburg week, uh, of course, a pickle pizza. Mm-hmm. We've had lots of pizzas that are inspired by things that are not pizzas. A wedding soup pizza, a Ooh. Reuben pizza. Yeah. A, uh, <laughs> I, I was out of town for the Bon Me pizza. I missed that completely. I'm mm. still still a little salty about that. <laughs> we could start a Twitter uh, campaign to bring it back. But we could, yeah, yeah. I know a guy. Maybe we could lobby a, lobby a, a certain kitchen manager to bring that one back around. But it's uh, it's fantastic. It's just like on the on the brewery side, we take advantage of opportunities when, when when they come our way for fresh ingredients and draw inspiration from the world around us. And she puts a uh, the horror story is I jokingly sent Cheryl during a busy Friday service a few weeks ago. I sent her a, a text with just the words pumpkin spice latte pizza <laughs> <laughs> and and as a joke yeah and the next pizza of the week is of course a pumpkin spice latte. wow <laughs> and, and it's been our most popular pizza <laughs> that we've ever ever sure. done and it wasn't a sugary like and there was no coffee in it just to be, mm-hmm. to be clear um, it was this like wonderful savory uh, mascarpone cream and, and, and just like fantastic fantastic pizza Ooh, and, oh, damn. and we uh, <laughs> right yeah, yeah. yeah. well no, I, it, it not only does it sound good but i was going to pitch a few pizzas you are you can beat to the punch yeah kind of yeah because <laughs> yeah. <laughs> i've i literally made a pizza like that in the past not necessarily mm, pumpkin ah. but with sweet potato wow and like sweet potato and mascarpone yeah. And, yeah. And she did a little sage on top of it that mm. really just brought this mm-hmm. savory note. And sorry, I'm a little. Yeah, I was going to say. You're <laughs> funny, so. When are, um, we, when are but, we starting a pizza podcast? Yeah, but we're taking we're taking all all, uh, all all recommendations on new pizza of the week because uh, you know eventually the well gets a little dry. We may have to start repeating some of these, but I I think we might be at a point where we're going to have like 52 different pizzas offered. Nice. That are all like. Legitimately, and not just like, oh, here's a mushroom pizza, right. or here's mm-hmm. an onion pizza, or something. Like, all have a have a have a concept that they hang together. People are going to find something that goes well with the beers here, <laughs> right? Right. Yeah. yeah. So the the pizza I was going to pitch, I had another one just in the back pocket, just in case. Of course, you, <laughs> you, you, you got to have pizza them. in my yeah. back pocket, <laughs> right? <laughs> but uh, usually a thin crust, right? A thin crust. That's it. It's back pocket. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Stuff crust it'll mush out on the seats. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but. Uh, Thanksgiving's coming up soon, mm-hmm. and GitGo has re-released the Pilgrim sandwich. They have. Pilgrim's back, but there's no reason there can't be a Thanksgiving pizza. Mm. Of It's pretty good naming, too, on the Pilgrim, I guess. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> pretty, uh, pretty solid on, on yeah. the front. Yeah. Get-Go, GitGo's got that, so maybe you have to come up with something that's more like pizza-giving or... Uh, I, know that, uh, I know that Cheryl has some, some specific Thanksgiving plans for, uh, for pizza, and also everything that, that she does here. I'm a vegetarian, so mm-hmm. uh, everything that we do here on the, on the Pizza of the Week front is always available in vegetarian form, nice. and oh. often, often in vegan form as well. We've got like vegan cheese, and actually we had a, uh, this might horrify some meat eaters out there, but we had a, uh, a vegetarian meat rep come in and bring us some samples of vegetarian pepperoni and hmm. vegan vegan pepperoni, vegan sausage. Oh, right uh, so now we're ba- basically able to cover it all. Nice. Uh, the only thing we really don't have is gluten-free. I mean, but, it, but you're coming to a brewery. <laughs> right. <laughs> this place is kind of like riddled with gluten. Yeah. yeah. Um, we do have some gluten-free, certified gluten-free <laughs> offerings. Um, cider and our G&T hard seltzer are, right. are both uh, certified gluten-free, but yeah, it's kind of hard to do on the pizza front. Mm-hmm. That's uh, probably somewhere you want to go like Orox or maybe Arsenal. Yeah. yeah, yeah if you're, more if you're really, yeah, if you're <laughs> really like, you know, if it's not just a dietary selection, yeah. if it's like it's a, the a medical, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You, you probably don't want to be like touching the tables and the, <laughs> the, the, the uh, don't go through those doors. 
<laughs> right. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All the all the smells just suddenly. Uh, yeah, I don't uh, feel great. I'm feeling a little, a little flushed. <laughs> uh, yeah. So we had talked about pizza. Now it's time to talk about beer. All right. And you still have it on tap right behind you. Yeah. The almost famous. The collaboration with Permanis. Yep. So can you tell us about how that came to be? What was the, the genesis of that? And also, what is that beer? That's, um, yeah, Jen, around here, we just typically refer to it as the pickle beer. But it, technically speaking, it's a, uh, it's a goza with fresh cucumbers and uh, other various pickle-related spices. We had a had a conversation with our actually with our wholesaler I think that was the ones like hey you should do something with Permanis and I'm like oh I kind of know the one guy we could maybe do a thing and talk yeah let's have him in and have a conversation and we talked about what possibilities there were something to complement you know they were looking for kind of they were kind of looking for a house beer at the time mm-hmm. it doesn't necessarily fall into that category but um, it's something that that made sense and we mentioned our our Brewside crew at the time had uh, had floated the notion of a pickle beer, tasted a few commercial examples. They were horrified by some and, <laughs> and, and thrilled by others, and thought like, "Hey, maybe we can do something um, something in this arena." And I think the initial response from Permanis was a little a little mixed, a little like, <laughs> "Wait, what? That's that's you know, that's that, do those exist? Is that a thing?" Right. Um, so when we decided to do it, marched ahead, did the production run, and we made a, a large amount of it mm-hmm. and packaged it. And we had a whole crew from, like, like the guy Jim uh, that we've been working with at Permanis. And he's like, hey, come out. I'd like to, love to taste it after, after, you know, after the canning run. I'm like, oh, come on out. He brought, like, like six people with him. I didn't realize <laughs> that there was, like, a lot of Permanis involvement and a lot of concern. And, <laughs> and it was really quiet in here. And we, like, poured the beer and then... Suddenly it got like, oh. you know, <laughs> like relaxed and comfortable and people were like, wow, this is really good. This is not what I expected. I didn't, you know, I think they were expecting a lot of, a lot of pain and suffering in the glass. Right. <laughs> um, and it really is a, is a, is a lovely little, little light refreshing uh, pickle beer. But we uh, actually, we, let's, let's get some into a glass here. Oh, all right. Um, uh, but, uh, but yeah, we still have it on tap. We tucked a little extra draft away to have it because... Now that we're serving draft again, we knew, you know, at the time we just, we can just about all of it, but we saw that things would be maybe opening up a little more and we'd be able to continue mm-hmm. to serve draft. I'm going to say that every single time somebody gets a sampler flight in this room. That's on it. That's on it. Yeah. There's no <laughs> chance that, that somebody's coming in here for the first time and, and not getting that pickle beer as part of that. Part of that that totally makes sense. It's, yeah. it's, it's yeah. too alluring to not get it. Right. Yeah. But it's and a, give me a little six, in, ounce, yeah. six ounces of it. I'm, I'm mm-hmm. all in. Yeah. Right. You know, yeah. You're, are you going to, am I going to fill a growler of it uh, mm-hmm. without? We'll see. That's one of those beers where, yeah, you, you're going to kick yourself if you don't get it. Right. Right. Yeah. So we've been, we've been rolling with it, rolling with it here on draft for a while. And a lot of people are still surprised to find it but we as we as i say often we make lots yes. uh, we, we may not it may not be the smartest business move because <laughs> scarcity breeds interest but generally we make a lot and we mm-hmm. when we tuck a little bit aside for draft to be able to spread it around for the casual users because the people that come in to buy the pickle beer are very different from our regular guests really that come to see us yeah they're people that we have never seen before yeah. and we may never see again until next year's pickle beer right Gratitude Barley Wine has a similar, not necessarily the same audience, but a similar like outlier to our regular mm. regular core yeah. of of uh, East End yeah. uh, regulars. Like, I can say like the almost famous almost always gets like press that reaches yeah. into like yeah. a more mainstream because it's tied with right. Picklebird, Picklesburg. Right. Yeah. Gratitude, yeah. I know, is just popular among everybody. Right, yeah, that's, so. a, that's like a deep dive, <laughs> yeah. like, you know, uh, 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 beer lover's beer. Yes, yeah. um, absolutely. Uh, whereas, like, yeah, I'm on, you know, we, we do a press tour with with Primanis mm-hmm. where we go to we spend a day. Jim and I spend the day together driving around from radio station to TV station to radio station <laughs> to, to talk to people. And, and he's got like a trunk full of like hot sandwiches and a <laughs> nice little cold beer, you know, uh, and and and, you know, 
you walk into a radio station uh, in the morning at 8 a.m. and people are actually willing to eat a permani sandwich and a and a and a cold beer. Well, they've been up since four, right? right. So, um, <laughs> That's the so they're, they're yeah. ready for yeah, they're ready for that, that afternoon beer. Say know? if there is a, a wrong time for a permani sandwich and a beer, I haven't met it yet. <laughs> yeah, right. It's it's uh, you know even if it's like first thing in the morning after a late night, maybe mm-hmm. that that all hey. kind of it all kind of fits together. If yeah. you throw an egg on top, there you know you it's breakfast. <laughs> there you go, exactly. <laughs> I really want a sandwich right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, Scott poured us up some of the uh, Almost Famous. And we might as well talk about it. We're here. For a second. Yeah, we're here. Yeah. To look at the beer, it's like uh, a little bit green, but not terribly green. Just No, it is not Kermit the Frog green. No, I'm thinking yeah. it's like uh, kind of like a Ghostbuster-y color in a way. I a little I bit. I don't even think <laughs> I'd go that these, far. These lights on the bar are a little a little more more blue, blue than, tinge. than than you know. You get it back. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I know that. So this year we had uh, sixteen hundred pounds of uh, fresh cucumbers mm-hmm. to peel, chop, puree, and then juice. It was a week long endeavor. We basically, you know, anytime the kitchen was slow, we're like, hey, guess what you guys are doing today? Peel, peel, peel. <laughs> so, job, juice, juice, juice. How, how does one juice a cucumber? Didn't think I'd be asking that question. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, we've got like a stick blender that's like three feet long. Okay. Um, you're taking a cucumber that's just chopped up crudely and into a bucket and then you're hitting it with a stick blender and making it into a puree. Ah, mm. okay. And then all from right. that point you still need to get the solids away from the from the liquid. Otherwise all the solids are going to be sitting at the bottom of the cans and mm-hmm. be gross and goopy when you pour it out. Although I don't know, maybe my standards for for what's appropriate in a beer glass <laughs> aren't as current perhaps as uh <laughs> Maybe that's a feature, not a bug. <laughs> yeah, so it has to run through a uh, uh, run that through a mesh cloth um, okay. to mm-hmm. pull out those solids, and then all the the solids that we pull out go go with the spent grain to the, the local dairy farmer that picks up all our stuff. So it gets eaten as do the as do the peels and the and everything that comes off of it. But yeah, then we have this cucumber juice that goes in partway through the fermentation of the beer. Nice. Um, so if there's any sugar in there, the fermentation will eat it up, and then we get a nice stable product. Yeah. Um, nice. At the end, the wild part is just from handling cucumbers and peeling them like with a potato peeler. If you do that for like an hour, your hand will have a little bit of a greenish tinge on it. If you do that for six hours, you will have a Hulk hand. It's like completely, completely deep green, like disturbing. Like, like, and you can wash and scrub, and it just, it's it, the the chlorophyll is in your skin. It's pretty intense. Nice. Um, yeah, I, I think I, I maybe uh, only peeled like a half a dozen of the cucumbers in this batch, so I'm, I, I didn't experience that personally. <laughs> Didn't, but the, I wasn't. I wasn't much help. <laughs> but well, I I will say you were a lot of help with this beer because it tastes really good. Yeah, uh, that's it, all. That, all the credit goes to the Brewside guys, uh, Brendan and Ian, concocting this recipe. I I will say you do have to like pickles. Oh, to absolutely. Like this beer. Oh yeah. If you do yeah. not like pickles, like we had a, a a guy Matt that was working with us for a while, and he hates pickles. Mm-hmm. And he's like, all right, let me try it. Let me try it. And he's like, oh, God. Oh, that's, that's a, you made a pickle beer. Yep, you did it. Good job. <laughs> yeah, I hate it, so it's accurate. <laughs> yeah. um, it sounds like me with IPAs. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, there you go. <laughs> but, yeah, no, I, I, it's really refreshing, though. And, like, because it's a goza, it uh, has that little bit of salty mineral yep. mm-hmm. flavor to it. Yep. But, yeah, you really do get the cucumber and the dill. Yeah, I, I think it's really the dill that cements it more yes. as a pickle beer than anything right. else. Mm-hmm. Right. So. Yeah, we had a uh, this like guy tasting tasting pickle beers from Texas that was, hey, I want to review your beer. I'm like, sure, go ahead. Mm-hmm. From it's, Texas, it's, he uh, probably you know, had already had the Martin House. And, yep, and, best yeah, made. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and we uh, we tasted some of that here. That stuff's pretty intense. I'm like, go ahead, sure, you can release. It's a freak. Free country, yeah. at least the pick, you know, <laughs> review the beer. Uh, and he's like, This isn't a pickle beer, this is a cucumber beer. I'm like, Well, if you read the back of the label, <laughs> <laughs> cucumber, peppercorn. Actually, this one has a has a hint of lemon in it, too. I forgot about yeah. that. So last year we added peppercorns to it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then this year we brought some lemon in, which takes the tartness in a little different direction than mm-hmm. the standard lacto tartness. I think overshadows, I want more peppercorn mm-hmm. in it to bring it bring it back to a savory. Right, right. Too. But yeah, we like to make a tweak to it every year. That's fun. And we've got a pickle shaped barcode on the back of the cans too, which is <laughs> yeah, I just saw that. which is also really exciting <laughs> you know, for your listeners. <laughs> 
I won't drink any beer now without a pickle shape bar. So all that, yeah, all that does is that entices the listener to come in yeah. and buy a four pack. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And this one we had it, I think we released it on a Wednesday and it was gone by Sunday. The Primani stores were pretty much sold out day one, yeah. mm-hmm. maybe day two, if some, you know, was hidden somewhere and they had to unearth it. Uh, and then we actually did this year for the first time, we did another release to, uh, to Giant Eagle like Ooh. a week later. Okay. And people were like, what? There's no people there left. I can't. What? <laughs> like, yeah, we're all out. Go to Giant Eagle. Yeah. <laughs> we get it. Get some when you're, you know, getting, uh, getting some other groceries. <laughs> Awesome. So is there any other business, restaurant, entity, person, is there anybody else in Pittsburgh that you haven't done a collaboration with that you would want to? Oh, boy, that's a good question. We've had a lot of conversations with various Pittsburgh institutions, but you, you hit the nail on the head. Like, it, it's, it's we're excited about Pittsburgh, mm-hmm. and we're excited about doing things with other Pittsburgh institutions Permani Brothers has been around for a long time. My first Permani's experience was, I think, in 1984 at about 2 or 3 a.m. And that might have been a time when they weren't open during the day. They may have just, you know, when they opened at like 10 p.m. or or midnight or something down in the Strip District, somebody, you know, shoved me in the back of a car and said, we're going to Permani (laughs) Brothers. All right. But those kinds of deep Pittsburgh roots are what we love to unearth and and find to find something cool to do with. Yeah, we've had conversations with uh, museum entities. We've had conversations mm-hmm. with Bike Pittsburgh. Oh, okay. um, uh, we certainly do some uh, a, n- a number of bike related things throughout the year. They're coming up on a big anniversary. We might do something with them. I need to 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 knock on uh, Scott Bricker's door again and see what, uh, what they've got <laughs> cooking. I thought it would be a really interesting discussion to talk about, like, how many bike lanes were in Pittsburgh and how many breweries were in Pittsburgh back when we Uh, both started, uh, and then compare that to where we are now and, you know, you know, ask people which, you know, we could, we could have a a whole trivia night on that, like, (laughs) which, which is more, which is growing faster. It's not a competition, but it's, uh, uh, how far, how how far do the bars reach versus how far do the bike lanes reach? Exactly. (laughs) How, what's the farthest brewery you can get to from a uh, bike lane? From a bike lane, <laughs> or, yeah. Uh, yeah. Or, uh, can you do a bike lane to? Is there uh, actually there's um, um, there's a there's a few breweries parked on uh, some major bike paths in, mm-hmm. in the Pittsburgh area mm-hmm. that uh, I'm I'm fans of uh, frequenting. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, but uh, yeah, that's my I'm, I'm hoping one will come to our neighborhood someday. There's been discussion of one over <laughs> on this old railroad bridge that goes across uh, kind of adjacent to the Highland Park Bridge. Right on. Yeah. Cool. Well, let's come back and kind of wrap up segment one. We started segment one with a milk pour. We did. But I guess we're ending it with a pickle beer. <laughs> <laughs> segment one, we're Pickles already going, on a, we're going yeah. on a wild ride. Yeah. <laughs> Pickles uh, and milk. Pickles and milk. I think I... Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Look, I'm into a lot of stuff, but... Ooh. <laughs> okay. That was the name of my first duo uh, indie rock uh, thing <laughs> I had with a guy. That's uh, very college. Yeah, 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 that's very college radio. I just feel that and milk. after that was spoken into existence, <laughs> <laughs> just pickles and milk, somebody woke up from a nap in a cold sweat. Yeah. That's yeah. A, I'm, I'm, there are people Googling pickles and milk. <laughs> or maybe that's a dot .org. I'm not sure. The internet is full of food crimes. I'm sure it's out there somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> but what is not a food crime is this milk poor pills. No. It's good. Yeah. yeah it's I like a, it. Yeah. It's in, incredibly like uh, for a Pilsner. I'm not a big fan of the Pilsners. But I am. I know you are. So I'll let you go after me, but <laughs> I I enjoy the fact that it is a little uh, little little more spicy, you know, from the dry hopping, and you know, hey, the the, the novelty of the milk pour is fun, you know. It is, <laughs> yeah. And, it is. And, and and the great part about it is it it starts a conversation, right? If mm-hmm. you see that in a bar, you're gonna you're gonna you're going to tap somebody on the shoulder and go, what, what the hell was that? What's yeah. going on over there? What, why, why did you get that on purpose? Why are you okay <laughs> with this? <laughs> what are you, what's happening? Uh, and it starts a conversation about, about a beer style that historically small brewers have moved away from, mm-hmm. right. In our, in our, in our existence, you know, the, the all of stones marketing about fizzy, fizzy, uh, yellow beer. And, and it is a, it's a fizzy yellow beer. Yeah. yeah. 
but it's also a delicious yes, fizzy. It has there. its place. <laughs> yeah. And that place is in my glass. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, you mentioned at the beginning of the segment how it's kind of used as almost like a, an end of the meal or end of the night type of, you know, send off, mm -hmm. you know, sort of a roadie, but not really. Right. I think for me, if that could be a coffee or peppermint stout, I'd be really happy with that mm. as a milk pour. As just a little aperitif, and then <laughs> yeah. first of all, aperitif. That's a fifty cent word. I know it's fun. <laughs> yeah. I probably even used it wrong. So Wait, is yeah. the aperitif in the in the beginning? Is the aperitif? I think that's it. Uh, yeah, I think and it then is. And then there's the a there's a, a digestif. Digestif. That's yeah, what yeah. it is. There yeah. we are. Yeah, yeah. Aperitif is beginning or yeah, so middle. You need of something the meal. like truly bitter and uh, mm -hmm. and and like an amaro or something as a uh, uh, a basis for to, to build the appetite at the beginning. Yeah. And, uh, which yeah, as a uh, an after dinner mint. Yeah, after dinner mint or chocolate. So like together. a like a mint chocolate porter. Yeah, mint it's, chocolate porter. Yeah. And you know, there's nothing that says you can't put other beers through these faucets. There was a uh, I was reading a post about somebody who's like, oh, okay, these are great. I'm glad they're seeing popularity. How long till mm -hmm. all the IPAs <laughs> are being served on milk pours? I'm like, um, it's already done. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, there. All, yeah. <laughs> it's just not in your market yet, but yeah. it'll be there. It's yeah. already, it's already happening. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's not unlike nitro. Yeah. Right. right, everything right. has right. gone through a nitro cycle at least yeah. once. Yeah, yeah. yeah. especially and, like thanks to left hand. Yeah. They've put everything through nitro at this <laughs> yeah. point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and including some of the packaged beer, uh, which mm -hmm. is has varying degrees of nitro success yep. in my, yeah. in my, in my <laughs> view. Um, no uh, widget, no care. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We've, uh, we've tried to try to, uh, uh, nitrogenated, uh, packaged version of our Britsburg ale a couple mm. of years ago, a Scottish Heather ale. And it actually, each can got dosed with liquid nitrogen. Oh. So you carbonate the beer a little bit less and then the nitrogen fills that void much as oh, you okay. do with, with draft. Um, but it, didn't really, you know, you you crack the can, and the nitrogen jumps out of the liquid yeah. immediately, and the action happens in the can, and then you pour it in the glass, and it's already right after yeah, the, it's already you, gone. You're closing the door after the horses run off, yeah. <laughs> or whatever the <laughs> awful metaphor is I tried to make there. That's why, you need, that's why you need the widget. Always need the widget. Yep. Always need the widget. <laughs> yep. That's right. No widget, yeah. no care. No. <laughs> but but yeah, with, with this beer, yeah, I like it. Uh, we had already talked about how. There are different approaches with it, depending on how you drink it. You know, if you go in into the foam side, if you go into the beer side, if you get a combination of two. I hate to put it this way. It's almost like a choose-your-own-adventure. It is. And the, the downside of that adventure is you have to come into the establishment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, you, it doesn't work from a can. Right, you can do right. a three-step pour out of a can to give a better head on the beer, but you're not going to make... Wet foam. No. The no. way that this faucet can, when you're pouring it out of a can, even if you're, you know, putting your arm up in the air and doing, yeah. a, doing like a, like a cedra pour, like a, a Spanish cider, like, you know, behind the back or whatever the nonsense is that do for the tourists. Um, the old skyhook? Yeah, a little bit of that. A little bit of that. Yeah. Yeah. That's the way they'll, they'll, uh, they'll throw cider in, yeah. in Spain. If you've seen people uh, pouring the, basically is you're getting your arms as far, far away at, huh. from each other as they can and, and pouring it. Um, Get that real impact. Back. Pour. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're not. Yeah, the glasses are never more than half full mm. uh, for obvious reasons. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, it knocks knocks uh, uh, the fizz out of it and changes the an, an immediate transformation if you were to pour it gently versus, right. versus throwing it. They refer to it as throwing throwing oh. cider, which is cool. kind of cool. cool. Uh, but even that to a pilsner is not going to give you the right give you the same that the faucet will do. Right on. Just another reason for when we go to Arsenal. For them to have a side pole? <laughs> well, no, so they can start so throwing we, so we throw their throwing things at you. <laughs> <laughs> As they're kicking us out yeah. the door. Right. And another thing. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll think about that. But yes. in the meantime, let's take a break. And we'll come back segment two. And we'll talk a little bit more. And maybe we'll try some more beers. I look forward to it. Okay. Sounds like a plan. Yeah. We'll be right back. First Sip Brew Box is a one-of-a-kind subscription service for craft beer lovers based right here in Pittsburgh. Every month, First Sip will send you a box full of craft beer enthusiast essentials, including t-shirts, glassware, and even food. Right now, our friends at First Sip Brew Box have an offer for you. Just sign up for a three-month subscription and get your fourth month free. Just enter the code HOPUSA when you sign up at FirstSipBrewBox.com. That's H-O-P-U-S-A at checkout to get your fourth month free at FirstSipBrewBox.com. 
Welcome back. We are still live and on location at East End Brewing here in the beautiful city of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We're here with Scott. Steve's here too. Hello. <laughs> you, do, I, do I need to say hello too? You hello. can. Hello. Oh, hello. Okay. Just don't put as much stank on it as Steve does. <laughs> Leaves it out there. <laughs> just, 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 don't be so mad about being here. I wasn't mad. It was, that just, was very exciting. Just, you need to get your ideas checked just, on what emotions just, are. <laughs> hello. Yeah. yeah, I'm a loud, boisterous person. That doesn't mean mad. <laughs> Touche. Yeah. And you shouldn't be mad because we are, we are here at East End and we are drinking good beer. And uh, since it is segment two, it's time for, well, beer three right now. Uh, so, Scott, what are we drinking this time around? We have our, uh, our Elliot, which is a beer in our neighborhood beer series and often misspelled. It's got a double L and a double T. Mm. I, so it does. I, uh, <laughs> I've had a hard time spelling that uh, <laughs> uh, over, the, over the last several, several weeks that uh, this one's been in our orbit. So this is a, uh, a spruce lager. One of the, uh, the benefits of benefits, I guess, of COVID times, if that's a... <laughs> okay. There's got to be at least one silver lining. We'll yeah. find it where we can. Um, we really uh, leaned into loggers a lot. And we've got, in addition to the Pilsners, we've been able to experiment a bit. And in fact, either later this week or perhaps next week, we've got a Dortmunder coming out Ooh, that, okay. uh, that I had a taste of last week that is really tasting pretty spectacular. I'm excited about that one. But this one is a uh, a spruce lager, so it's a lager brewed with the uh, the Augustiner strain, and but I think any subtlety or notes of of which yeast strain might be producing the <laughs> lager are probably being completely devastated by uh, this big, bright spruce yeah. flavor here and aroma, for that matter. Mm-hmm. Um, I can smell it. Uh, yeah, the glass is on the bar, and I can, I can I can smell spruce. I'm not sure if it's coming out of my own mouth or out of the glass. <laughs> It's not subtle. You certainly can pick this one out of a lineup if you're like, yeah. what is that? What is, what's, what's going on with that? Which one is the spruce lager? I know which one yes. is the spruce lager. We brewed this with foraged spruce tips. Our pals over at uh, Wild Purveyors that do a lot of foraging for everything from mushrooms to staghorn sumac. We've, we've gotten staghorn sumac from them in the past to brew a, brew a beer with. And this is uh, something else that they've uh, been able to get for us, which is the, uh, if you think of a spruce tree, it's this deep green. And then at a certain time of year, and I'm not sure exactly when that time of year is, these bright uh, light green little tips um, mm-hmm. appear at the end of the, of the branches. And that's the business that we're after. That's the oh, stuff okay. that's like nice and fresh and if you use the dark green stuff you get a lot of bitterness and it's more accurate and Mm -hmm. and and intense so this is the subtle version i get you (laughs) (laughs) if you can if you can buy that yeah Uh, but yeah this is our spruce lager so just out of curiosity how how many pounds of spruce tips had to be forged to be able to make this batch um i'm not sure what the what the poundage is offhand there was certainly less pain and suffering with that than there was with you know, peeling cucumbers <laughs> for a week solid. And, and, and of course, with spruce tips, a little goes a long way. You know, mm-hmm. this is like uh, like adding salt to a soup. You okay. Know? <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's pretty intense. I believe we did our addition on the hot side for this. Uh, that may not be true. They may, they may have gone in. They may have gone in cold side. I'm not sure. I didn't, I didn't make this beer. They don't let me make much beer here no. at all, <laughs> to, to be honest. I haven't, I haven't brewed here in a few years. <laughs> but thankfully, the guys that are making the, the, the beer here are way better at it than I ever was. So so yeah. it's a win-win. As long as they let you drink the beer and eat the pizza. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's, 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 that's why I'm here. Not a bad day at all. Yeah, I'm basically Colonel Sanders that. with beer and pizza, you know, just like a Walmart greeter or something. That is life goals right yeah. there. <laughs> That's pretty cool, though. But uh, to look at the beer, you said taking it out of a lineup wouldn't be hard because of the aroma. But like to look at it, it looks just kind of like a standard golden lager. It right. does. Which is, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's got like a light amber color to it. It's like clear as a bell. Mm-hmm. Um, 
which this is this is hats off to the uh, the brew side operations. We do not own a filter at this brewery. This is unfiltered. This is an unfiltered beer. But that's crazy. I, it, could not, it could not be any clearer. Mm-hmm. This is like as clear as mm-hmm. as tap water if it were light amber, right? <laughs> in color um, clear as aliquippa tap water. <laughs> 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 wow. Shots fired. Oh, he's not wrong, though. No? Oh, wow. He used to um, live in the area. It's fine. And, <laughs> yeah, it does not have any any uh, indications of uh, of what's to come yeah. when you look at it. it but on the And nose. it holds a head on it, too. It's, yeah. you know, it's not, uh, there's nothing nothing weird about it in terms of its out, out, outward appearance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you could set this on a bar at a VFW. No one would you're know like, the difference. You're like, oh, you're drinking a Yingling. Mm-hmm. You know, oh, yeah. <laughs> Little do you know. Yeah. <laughs> they won't know until they smell it. Right. And, that, like, and that'll depend on how Christmas much they time? smoke. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. It, that's a big Christmas tree nose on it. And yeah. the, these are beers that I like on the down low, mostly because we don't get a lot of them. Correct. Yeah. Like spruce beers yeah. are very few and yeah. far between. When you find them, we had one at the North Hills Homebrew Fest. And I think before that, there's a, I think it might be Masthead Brewing Masthead out of Cleveland. Masthead made one. Yards made one. Yards made one for a little bit. Yeah, so this this beer and, and beers of this, of this ilk, we've uh, developed like an internal name for this category of, of beers. Not really experimental. I, I've been referring to them as our... Uh, financial suicide series, ah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. and and that may actually come out as a as a legitimate like branding on a can at some point here because I think it, I think it's relatable to to other people in the industry and there's we have an, enough fun with it but like this is not a beer that people are beating down the door right. to come have mm-hmm. this is a, a a weird quirk like hey can we do this can we make something that's 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 using this forage material that as an ingredient and make it kind of hang together in a beer. We did a, uh, we did a spruce ale uh, as part of the neighborhood series um, a while back, and it was a little. The ale character was stronger mm-hmm. uh, in this same amount, same level of sprucing. I okay. guess we, maybe we dry spruced, <laughs> dry spruced <up> here. <laughs> um, but uh, the lager is a much uh, more subtle flavor profile. Right. So it's uh, we've got a smoke porter on tap. We've got you know <laughs> right. we've got a, we've got a number of <laughs> number of ways to 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 drive ourselves quickly into financial ruin. <laughs> yeah, that, here at East End Brewing. Financial ruin is a lot better than financial suicide. Just yeah, from well, a marketing. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> like, well, I don't know. It's like it's it's a uh, it's a it's it's a it's an intentional move. Yeah, uh, oh, yeah, uh, oh, yeah. It's very you know uh, self inflicted wound. Um, and and you know the smallest batch we make here is a twenty barrel batch. Financial Bruin. Duh. Financial Damn. Bruin. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. It's all there. Yeah. Yeah. Gotta go for the puns. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's why we're in this business. <laughs> but, yeah, I, again, it's a beer for me. I enjoy these kind of beers, and right. I understand right. it's not for everybody because it, even though it's not really hopped, it is hopped because it's beer, but it's not hopped like an IPA. You get a lot more of that spruce character, yeah. and it offers a lot of that vegetal and bitterness up front mm-hmm. but i think it tapers off into a nice malty back end it does yeah. and once and you get once you get acclimated to it yeah. <laughs> that's like that sounds like here you know <laughs> you'll get used to this <laughs> the, chew the aspirin the aspir- <laughs> the aftertaste is really nice right you know? um no it's a uh, the the subtlety of the beer starts to present itself mm-hmm. um, after you after you get through it i mean that's the same thing we have with this um lefroy barrel aged scotch ale Ooh. um that is Hazelwood. Um, yeah. The first sip of that is just all peat, and it kind of hits you right in the eyes, Oof. and and that's all you can taste. And then you get about a halfway through the pint, and you realize you're drinking a completely different beer. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's what we were talking about during the break, that whole, like, acclimation of your palate to a, to a flavor, and then you start to pick up the subtleties after you mm-hmm. get through more of it. So like a beer like Hazelwood, we had a guy come into the tap room and he's like, that is, and he's loudly proclaiming, <laughs> that is the worst beer East End Brewing has ever made. <laughs> to which my response is, so far. So far. Right. <laughs> Give us a minute. <laughs> yeah, we'll make it. We'll make Day's something not over yet. <laughs> um, but uh, it doesn't work in a taster. It doesn't work in a, in a small pour or a mm-hmm. sip. It's something that you have to like, 
have a relationship with a little bit longer. Yeah, and I, yeah. I, I find that, you know, when comparing to the music world, like I, the music that I really, really like is stuff that I really didn't care for at first listening. Mm. It, it, it takes a, an, an extra, an extra bit of time with it. And sometimes it's hard to, hard to push to that mm-hmm. and get past that. But uh, I think this beer falls into that category too. Yeah. And, and this is, this is also a beer drinker's beer. Uh, cause they, it's not a one trick pony. Yeah. You know, there yeah. is more to it than just, eh, we threw some spruce and some beer. <laughs> yeah, good enough. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it does have nice body and a nice mm-hmm. maltiness and everything to it. So, yeah. yeah. You brought it up, though. You talked about the music that you listen to. And this is something we're starting sort of new on the show. Mm-hmm. We started it a long time ago, but we didn't follow through well enough. But we started it last week at Union. And now we're asking you, what does the brew house sound like on days that you're brewing? Mm. What, what is playing in the background? Oh boy, that's a uh, that's a pretty diverse. I'm sure everybody would say the same thing though mm-hmm. that it's all over the place. The, the yeah, answer is consistent so far, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah everything. Uh, and the reality is, you know, the, the the brewery is a place where you can listen to music just about every day, and so you're not going to play your like favorite music every day you're going to go deeper and and dip into stuff because you're just you know all right i have eight hours of listening today Mm -hmm. assuming the day goes well (laughs) eight hours yeah so you may find anything from polka music going on (laughs) back there that's not uncommon to hear hear polka music to uh, ian has a pretty uh eclectic uh taste where he'll pull out old hawkwind and um some really, really heavy, heavy stuff. Brendan will dip more into like gorillas or uh, uh, menu chow. Uh, I know those are some of his uh, uh, top, top picks. But then we also have Allison and Devin. Uh, Allison's been here since spring. She's our, our canning line operator. I don't know how often I'm not, I'm not exactly sure who's driving the music at every point in time. Uh, Cause so I, I have trouble attributing it to, to individuals and Devin's only been here. Like, I think this is week three for him. Okay. Um, um, so we have yet to see what, uh, he what, might not what, have radio what, control what, what yet. Pearls he's, uh, yeah. I don't know he if he's, if he's qualified for that uh, <laughs> his radio probationary period. Um, uh, but yeah, it's a, um, um, I mean, and the brew house sounds very different from the tap room. Oh, yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know? yep. so the tap room is generally upbeat, minimal swearing. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> just because more or less family, family friendly. friendly. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's pizza, too, which actually helps with the family friendly. We have a kid's menu built right in. There right? you go. It's you go. Pizza. <laughs> yep. But yeah, up, up front, we've uh, actually been dipping into a little more uh, uh, old school funk and mm. things. Uh, we've got some, some new bar staff that has brought, brought a lot of uh, uh, stuff to the table. So it's not just tired old white guy music. <laughs> <laughs> That's me, tired old white guy. Uh, uh, so we can, we can branch out from, uh, from, <laughs> from some of the standards. Nice, nice. Um, one thing that that will not, you know, like I'm I'm very adamant with, like, okay, you can put music on. We're not going to listen to the cl- we're not going to listen to the DVE soundtrack. Right, it still exists. <laughs> that hasn't changed since I was in high school, which was like a thousand years ago. Uh, because part of it is like when you experience a brewery, you're experiencing everything: the way the room smells, the way the people react, the way it sounds, uh, the way it looks, and of course, the way the beer tastes. Mm-hmm. Um, and so as a, a brewery in its 17th year, I am very aware of the notion that there's a there's an easy way for us to seem dated mm. uh, when people step through our doors. That's a very good point. And so I don't, you're not coming in here, we're, if there's Leonard Skinner on the goddamn uh, <laughs> in this room, <laughs> heads will roll. No, I'm, I'm not. But, uh, but it's going to yeah, be the certain, deepest of cuts that's, live. <laughs> right, yeah. That, that nobody's ever heard and no one can identify as part of that band. Um, but, but yeah, it's, it's part of like, you know, making sure we're, we're staying relevant. Mm. And musically relevant, music is important to me. That's, yeah. that's, that's, you know, I can be at a restaurant and have great food and like, <laughs> oh my God, you're playing that whole album. Really? I think I need to just finish up and leave. Like, yeah. you know, mm. uh, it's, it's an important part of the, of the experience here. And that may sound like, <laughs> you know, nitpicky or fickle or whatever. And also, you know, it needs it, to make it, sure that we're, we're casting a wide enough net so that we're 
making sure that we're welcome to everybody yes. that comes yeah. in the door. And, and it's cool that you're thinking about it, though, at least, because if you're sitting down and you're waiting for a pizza and you've got a beer and you're, you, all you hear is Hotel California, oh, it'll, get on, it'll get on your nerves, especially if you hate that <laughs> yeah. song, which most people do. <laughs> right. oh, the fucking Eagles, man. Yeah. Oh, if man I, if I, get out of my cab. <laughs> if, I hear, if I hear Steve Miller's Joker, if anywhere, I immediately get like a sour yeah. attitude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it affects you. People have it. Whereas, like, if I hear something that I've never heard before that is hopefully inoffensive to me, yeah. um, but it's something new that gives me, uh, uh, me personally, I'm going to be like, what is this? What is that? Am I going to see what that is? Maybe my phone can pick it out and yep. tell me what it is. I'm, I'm going to, I'm as excited about that as I, I, I'll discover new music any place I am, mm-hmm. yeah. hopefully. Um, maybe not at the mall. Or, <laughs> you know, that's, I, uh, but if it's there, sure, I'll, yeah. I'll, uh, I'll seek it out. And it's part of, it's part of your experience, part of your sensory input. Yeah. Um, at, at worst, you'll tune it out. Right. Like yeah. if it's a if it's a if song you, can. you yeah right. if you can if it's a song you hate though you're gonna be actively mad be about it. If it's a song it. you don't work, know, you can turn it out yeah, and yeah. you mm-hmm. can just hear a beat in the background and yeah. it's setting a it's tempo yeah. and, and right and yeah and there's also like other songs that are like super low key like <laughs> yeah. like you know take the air out of the room like mm-hmm. okay you, yeah you, it's we're trying to kind of <laughs> like <laughs> zizz it up a little bit here like give it a little we're yeah. here to enjoy yeah. ourselves right, right. I'm, if I want to take a nap I'm not going to the booth over there. With the, 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 yeah. I've definitely been in some bars that have used that tactic to clear the room mm-hmm. yes. of like putting on some real dour music and just like, uh, I guess party's over. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the lights come up, the now. music comes yeah. up, and you're like, ooh, Ugh. that's interesting. <laughs> yeah. 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 So the one thing I will ask is uh, we are going to start a Spotify playlist for Pittsburgh Brewery uh, you know, music in the brewery itself. Nice. So we're going to ask you for three songs. Not right now. Okay. So think about that. Talk to your your uh, your brew staff, things like that. Okay. So okay. We're, we are going to need at least three yep. songs. Right. You'll get an email. And I think we're, we're looking to maybe put this out for, like, the holiday season. Okay. So it doesn't have to be holiday music. Okay. But it's just some extra content because we like to drag our ass around the holiday season. Yes. <laughs> so we want to give our <laughs> listeners extra content. We, uh, last, last year... You know, during during whatever level of shutdown we were going through in the holiday season, we um, we had this sort of like remixed holiday favorites that were playing like mm-hmm. on the patio and here and and um, I think the staff was ready to like murder me uh, <laughs> yeah. because they're like, can can I can I please put something else on because I've heard this this, this <laughs> version of this classic that makes me want to scratch my eyes out forty times and and I need to yeah so so yeah we we'll dip a couple of those into our mix yeah, yeah. but yeah happy to happy to pull some things and you want stuff from the brew side or oh from brew side oh yes. brew side because yep. we have a whole you know I actually have a playlist that's. Um, I think it's a public playlist uh, for the for the brewery for front of house that we've mm. we'll we'll use if a if a bartender is like you unfamiliar know, stage fright and, yeah, yeah. and mm-hmm. like I don't know what to you know I don't know what to <laughs> play. Do I, do put the, I don't know but it's, my, <laughs> it's very it's a it's a lot to put upon somebody yeah. Yeah. here yeah. you play the music for the whole room you be the vibe I don't want to be the vibe I never signed on for this I don't want to be the vibe I just like beer I didn't want to but yeah we want we want back a house we want behind the scenes all right. Yeah. What what gets motivated? What motivates the beer to appear? It gets okay. the people going. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um, so I am pretty well into this spruce lager. Oh, I'm doing all right over here as well. And as it was mentioned, it's part of the You Are Here series. Yep. Now, I believe when we talked to you on episode 202, you hadn't quite reached 50, but I know you surpassed that during the summer. And we're coming up kind of close to the end, I think. Yeah, we're if, if my at, math uh, is right. We're still uh, still in the fifties. We had a little a little lull here as we were shifting some things for. Oh, okay, mm-hmm. uh, and we had some seasonal beers to get out. We have to give tank time to beers like Snow Melts and and Smokestack uh, Heritage Porter, which we haven't done for a little bit. And actually, we have Black Hop, um, our Black IPA, coming mm-hmm. up in a bit. So we've had to had to. Um, Tuck the neighborhood beers to the side for a little bit to get some seasonal stuff. Oh, and Harvest, which always wrecks us completely <laughs> because of the wet hops and they're they're you live by their schedule. They, no, they yeah. don't they don't bow to yours. It's like oh, <laughs> Tuesday, no Wednesday, no wait, wait. Yeah. So we're about in the mid fifties, but okay. um, yeah, my uh, as that number increases, so does uh, my anxiety about what's next. Because <laughs> uh, uh, it's been a it's been a wonderful you know 
going into it, I didn't know how I'd feel about a 90 beer series. Right. It's pretty, pretty uh, daunting uh, going in, but it's it's been fantastic because we have had been able to form all these connections in all these neighborhoods. Every time we release a beer, you know, we've got uh, a, a couple coming up. Um, we're talking about a, a location to do a release in Carrick mm-hmm. um, uh, uh, for a uh, for another neighborhood beer sometime in the next couple of weeks. Um, we're actually able to do events in the neighborhoods again. Right. Um, and take advantage of as much of the good weather mm-hmm. as is left, especially if we can do these events outside. Um, that always helps helps the draw. Yeah, the big question that looms is, uh, is what's next. Yeah. Um, because we've got, you know... Label designs, <laughs> uh, na- you know, beers, beers named. I don't, I haven't, I haven't had to like name a new beer in a long time. Uh, and, and that can be, that can be fun, you know, for the first 20, 30, 50. Right. Uh, but after a while, what, what is, why, why are we, why are we naming it that? You do a collaboration beer and the whole time mm. during the collaboration, you're like, what are we going to call this? What are you going to call this? Uh, we're just going to settle on something. Uh, I, I like it. I don't love it. Uh, what else do you have? You know? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and sometimes it, just comes to you, and other yeah. times you're waiting for that moment, and it doesn't doesn't, <laughs> doesn't, you just doesn't, go doesn't show up. It's something I don't yeah. know. What. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, we've uh, uh, we've talked about uh, a number of different different options in that in that regard. I think we're probably going to um, start to spiral out a little bit outside mm-hmm. of the city limits. Because uh, one of the things we heard early on was like, oh, I can't wait till you do the neighborhood beer for Dormont. Wait. And, like, well, Dor- and I'm like, you live in Dormont, right? Yeah. Uh, you know that's not in the city of Pittsburgh, <laughs> yeah. right? Oh, oh, I guess it's not. Yeah, okay. But maybe we'll get to that. Um, so uh, so neighborhood, you know, Pittsburgh neighborhood adjacent beers yeah. uh, uh, surrounding. We'll start to maybe maybe work our way through that. Um Maybe an idea, just just an idea. I'll take them all. But uh, uh, county, and then just do a beer for each county, and then maybe you can also like do a little small partnership with a brewery that's in that county. Mm-hmm. So actually move it to like a collaboration yeah. Uh, model. Yeah. Yeah. See, yeah. My, my thought with that was, and we're just going to start pitching the idea. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, take I'll take them. I'll take the idea. <laughs> <laughs> but my idea was, was using the belts, you know, your red belt, your yellow belt, your orange belt. I thought about like doing doing yeah because nobody knows what those mean or right. what they are and these, these enigmatic signs that we see with a big circle on them with a color in the middle and like you know my wife is you know not from here she's like what's with the orange belt what's the why why what does that mean yeah. I'm like well it's a long story that I don't really know <laughs> go look at Wikipedia it'll take you um, uh, take you around the city don't worry about yeah, it yeah around a thing they're concentric kind of circles yeah. kind of yeah. Uh, yeah so is the is the beard named just per belt because that only gets us what like four or five a half a dozen that's, that's, a, uh, that's well, a, it's Roy G. Biv so let me get yeah. is it oh it's, it's yeah, the entire seven yeah oh okay mm-hmm. okay I only know like the the red and the orange so <laughs> yeah because it, it you go Roy G. Biv and it works from outside in so the red belt is the outermost loop oh, which really? is not actually a loop uh, it actually it's 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 cut off yeah it's cut off I think in the northwest portion of it then you work your way in you know red or wow. orange. So Yellow. what's going on up in the northwest where they couldn't couldn't complete the Probably circuit? Probably the highways there. and such. Well, I, I think it <laughs> went into another county. Mm. We start getting into Butler County and what is I don't know what the other one is up that way. Butler? Oh, I don't know. I don't yeah. either. I don't Should go like that direction. Shake my fist vaguely in the air. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> the, 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 yeah. Oh darn you, Butler, and it might in that area it might touch a little bit of Beaver coming all the way around because yeah. it goes up all the way through Wexford. It does. So. Yeah. Coming wow. around, yeah. Wow. So, you're, well, you're more belt first than I. <laughs> I have a lot of time on Wikipedia. <laughs> yeah. I used to be a delivery driver. So, uh, uh, did you actually use the belt system to? Uh, no, no to, I didn't. No, yeah, <laughs> I used the highway I, system. I've yet to, right, or, or like your phone or yeah, GPS yeah exactly. of some sort. Yeah, I, uh, I, I've yet to, and, uh, and like I say, I'm an old fart. I, uh, you think I would know somebody that would make use of the belt system? <laughs> oh, you pick up the orange belt and head out there. Like nope. no one's ever no one said that, that in our lifetime. So, yeah, I, I actually have used the belt system. I'm sure you have. What? <laughs> because I, there's a unicorn in the room. So, because I live right, <laughs> right by where the orange belt runs by. So if I see signage for the orange belt and I kind of have a general direction of where I'm going, I can get to where I need to be. 
You also know how to get home. <laughs> yeah, I just so, follow so, the orange belt. So here's, long my, get here's home. my here's my thought for the for the belt system. You know, we've got a double yellow line. I think they just need to put like an orange <gasps> line in the middle. Yeah, you know, or, red, there you or go. just to just to like give me a sense of where because I'm not I'm not going to see the sign. The sign's no. going to zip by me if it's still standing. Right. I don't think they're I don't think like oh this orange belt sign is rusted. We're going to have to replace it with a new <laughs> orange. I don't think anybody's out there updating the belt signage. Um, yeah, yeah, let's say, uh, but but that would get us that would get us about a half a dozen beers mm-hmm. there, right? And yeah. I, and I know that there are multiple breweries along said belts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That way, that way you don't feel the need to like take on a big undertaker in like nine, ninety, you know, right. neighborhoods. Right. You just do a couple belts, you do a couple counties. Eh, it's yeah. no big deal. Oh, yeah. See, if you gave me two hundred, I'd be like, sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's not about like streets, uh, like. Well, and the other the other part that's really like unexpected when we got into this, which was. You know, people have a lot of ownership in Pittsburgh and mm-hmm. they're about local and like, oh, this is a Pittsburgh thing. Oh, your brewery's in Pittsburgh. Oh, you know, like when we originally had our tap handles, um, it was this kind of janky handle with a beer sign that would slide in the top. And we finally got rid of that and we went to the original like big hop handle, the the kind of tapered mm-hmm. red and green. And when I uh when I got them back from the tap handle manufacturer the first time I opened it up and I was like, Oh my God, look what they did. They put the Pittsburgh is huge on here. <laughs> <laughs> the, the name of the beer is going to be Pittsburgh. Oh, this is this. Uh, but I already had like, you know, a, 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 a couple thousand dollars invested in mm, a large right. amount of tap handles. And we started putting them out and beer sales went up. No, like, oh. like, like <laughs> measurably up. Like, like we were running six stools and then they're running half barrels. You know, like it was an immediate, like a light switch turned, mm-hmm. and it was because people saw the word Pittsburgh on it. People were mm-hmm. ordering the beer. They, I'll have that Pittsburgh, and ah. like, oh, it's actually called Big Hop. But whatever, you got them on the hook. whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> and and uh, I I I completely you know missed the 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 boat on that it was <laughs> accidental <laughs> accidental brilliance. Yeah. Um, and and uh, and so that that level of Pittsburgh ownership is um, is incredibly intense when it comes to neighborhoods. Mm-hmm. And I've never I never expected that. Like we you know we did Garfield and the guy a guy sends me a picture, like this is my grandmother. She's drinking a can of Garfield. She was born and raised in Garfield. Still lives in Garfield. She's thrilled that there's a, this like happy picture of this like That's awesome. old lady drinking a <laughs> Garfield. I'm like, holy shit. She's drinking like a, you know, this hazy, hazy IPA yeah. uh, 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 and, and loving the fact that it's Garfield. But all of these stories and all these things that come out, you know, during the break we were talking about Esplin, mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. this sort of like weird, obscure neighborhood that sort of seemed like a leftover bit after the other neighborhoods were formed around. Well, we got a, uh, uh, an email from a guy. His last name is Esplin. Oh. And it was apparently named after his grandfather. Okay. Grand, great grandfather. But, but it had like a family. Can That was his family name. And yeah. that's what mm-hmm. they named the neighborhood after. Um, uh, and he's like, where can I get this beer? How can I? I'm like, oh, come on down. We got it. From <laughs> that's that's fantastic. And it was like right at the end of like the beer running out too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and that's the other challenge is they're, they're, they're one and done, right? So, yeah. so that, was a, that was a hellas lager. We may make a Hellas Lager again, but it's not going to be that Hellas Lager. And it's lager. not going to be called Esplan. And, and it's not going to be called mm-hmm. Esplan. Unless we, you know, sometime down the road, who knows, maybe we revisit the uh, the, the series in, in in part or in or in its entirety. Who knows? <laughs> Redo 2025. Yeah. yeah. yeah, just, yeah. yeah do over. <laughs> yeah. So have, you, have you had anybody come in and say, hey, this is my neighborhood, but this beer does not represent my neighborhood? <laughs> yeah, there's definitely, there's definitely um, people that complain about, um, uh, well, people complain about everything, right? Because no. it's <laughs> the internet. So um, people will complain that the Bloomfield beer that we brewed was a Scotch ale. Okay. It's kind of Bluefield is kind of thought of as an Italian neighborhood. Yeah. Am I gotta I gotta brew a beer with basil and like, tomatoes or something? Like am I, you know, to make the uh, Italian to do that, to, to do that ninety <laughs> times? Like, yeah, I could do an Italian pills, yeah. some bad notion. Um so we you know, we try to line those things up when we can, but um some of the other complaints are about where we do the release mm-hmm. in a in a neighborhood. Um 
and we did a release at in, at the Indigo in uh, hotel in in South Oakland, which is kind of like the old the old steel mill area right down by the river. Mm-hmm. And someone's like, "Oh, nothing says South Oakland like the Indigo Hotel." <laughs> uh, I'm like, "Well, I, what do you want me to do, man? Come right. on! Like, I'm trying to find a place that like here's a place that actually has good beer, and right. it's a, and it's a it's a it's a spot. You know, sometimes there are beer venues, and other times." We're looking for like we're looking to explore a neighborhood and learn something, find some small family owned thing. But, you know, am I going to like release a beer at like a corner bodega? That's a little like like (laughs) with eight year old Dorito chips. Yeah, Yeah. it's a little it's a you know, there's there's we're we're trying to at least and also maybe like partner with a with a with a licensee that can actually maybe right like run the beer and (laughs) like, hey, place that has space for people to show up. (laughs) Right. right. (laughs) Versus like standing on the street corner. Um, Although we have had some good good releases on the street corner uh, um, in the past. The uh, the Pilsner we did with Commonplace Coffee just off of the Mexican War Streets. What was it called? Off, uh, North Commonplace is also in Garfield. Yeah, they've got a a, uh, Mexican War Streets. uh, shop there, and we did it. It was this lovely afternoon. It was the same um, something else going on in town, and and we actually had like Rick Seaback came out. Oh, nice. We had like like a hundred people on the street, like drinking beer, and then we see like this entourage of cars come up, and it's Bill Peduto. In his, oh, jeez. Oh. And and, and uh, of course, I see him walking up and wave to him, and he's waves to me, and I'm, and I say just making the dumb joke uh oh and everyone's like drinking beer in the street <laughs> oh it's the mayor hide your beer and then people are like we're ducking like, I'm like no it's, he's come to draw the next neighborhood out of the growler he was we reached out to him it's and he, cool it was, no it's all right it's just not yeah but the uh, yeah the teenager in me was like you know, <laughs> have to take advantage of this hide the beer hide the beer quick uh, yeah. here comes the law <laughs> yeah quick run <laughs> Say that has got to be one of the most Pittsburgh days ever. Did yeah, you know? yeah. The mayor of Pittsburgh and the unofficial mayor of Pittsburgh both like. There's a, there's right. a picture of, a, of the central north side. That's right. what it was. Called. I mean, that's oh, a, okay. it took yeah, yeah, a while yeah. to not think about it to think about it. There you go. That's a Yinzer <laughs> dream right there. Yeah, it was. It was kind of, kind of, kind of magical. Fantastic. <laughs> cool, cool. Well, uh, we just wanted to touch on one more thing. You had mentioned how you haven't been brewing in the brew house yourself too much yeah but uh, at one point in time years and years ago you were a home brewer mm-hmm. and we always like to ask brewers about their home brew experience the before they became big yeah uh do you have any horror stories that you can remember and do you have any advice for anybody who's just now getting into it at 2021 mm. um the uh yeah getting into it now is um uh is pretty fantastic because of the access to information that you have and the access to ingredients that you have. Mm-hmm. Like when I was home brewing, it was very limited. A lot of a lot of syrups and extracts and things that uh, you couldn't get fresh ingredients. You couldn't get fresh yeast. Mm-hmm. You'd use what you what you had one time, but the probably the most nightmarish homebrew batch I've ever <laughs> I've ever <laughs> ever concocted. I think I read somewhere in a in a homebrew book about. Um, how um, IPAs, uh, and again, we're like, this is dated, so this is IPA, more of a West Coast construct than mm-hmm. what we what mm-hmm. we think about today. Uh, had like an oaky note to it, and I'm like, oh, okay, I can I can do this, and and I'll use some oak chips here, oh. and uh, rather than uh, putting the oak chips into the you know sterilizing them and putting them into the fermenter, oh, no. I decided <laughs> I decided the the best way to get the best extraction from those was to put them in the boil. Mm. Oh, uh, and oh, so you no. think like a handful of of <laughs> oak chips in a in a five gallon batch. Let the beer, you know, and it's this is in my mind because we're tasting a spruce, yeah, a spruce lager. <laughs> uh, except that instead of a, a delightful spruce lager with a with a, a pretty intense like pine character to it, um, I produced uh, what was essentially five gallons of pine saw. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and 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 as my my habit was at the time was like all right if you have to dump a batch you're gonna drink an entire pint of this beer oh. to, to, so oh. that you can learn you can learn <laughs> you can your lesson learn to, to do your homework and understand what went wrong and that was not a that was not a possibility I could not it was yeah. it was it was 
my body was rejecting it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, whatever you're doing, get that out of here. And I was like, and like, a couple of sips. I'm like, yep, I'm not even going to drink this pint and dump the whole dump the whole thing yeah. down my kitchen it, sink at the time. If the brewer can't drink it, it's got to go. Yeah. 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 And I've, I've taken that lesson to, you know, uh, the old the old brewery location where we had a uh, we had a 20 barrel batch of, of big hop that I that I brewed and I tasted it one day. I'm like, oh God, this is really tasting phenolic. There's a lot of old. Yeah. I have like a super sensitive sensitivity to phenols, mm-hmm. um, I can smell like a uh, an infected beer from across the room if it's that if it's that particular flaw. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, and so this one had it, and I'm like, uh, in denial of it, went home. Came back in the next day, you know, I'm like looking at the tank, trying not to like look it directly in the <laughs> eye, you know, like because like, I know I know what's what's coming, and like pulled a pulled a pine out and uh, and and sat there with my hand on the valve, at the bottom of the tank, and like. Drank this, <laughs> drank this phenolic pint, and said, "Yep, it's there's nothing of value in this tank. Mm-hmm. It's just like cut your losses. All and, you could do is hurt yourself, and just watch it, watch it go down the drain, and clean the tank better next time, yeah. and uh, and move on. But yeah, it's uh, you know that's that's if you if you want your beer to be better this year than it was last year, you got to be willing to throw some beer away. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, and it's a sad state of affairs, but that's." It's right important. On. It's important to 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 do it at that point in time. That was a big hit. That would have you know, that was that was a a, a big financial investment that that we had to yeah. say goodbye to. <laughs> yeah. um, these days, if we were to have to dump a batch, and we haven't dumped a batch for a long time here, we've dumped some barrels. Barrel aging is a, mm-hmm. is a roll of the dice, mm-hmm. uh, but uh, we would at least be able to to weather that a little easier these days than we would back yeah. then. Lose the battle, win the yeah, war. Right, exactly. That's hopefully, <laughs> hopefully that's the case. Yeah, yeah. 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 20, 20 barrels of just junk sitting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, nope, can't get rid of that. I can let it sit in the tank, and yeah. maybe maybe the infection will get into the gaskets, and make it worse. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but one uh, one beer I'm glad that you did not get rid of is this Elliot with two T's. And two L's. Two and two L's. That's right. Can't yeah. forget the L's. <laughs> um, yeah. But yes, this is the spruce tip lager. Yeah, I'm a fan. Same. Yeah, glad you like it. Yes. Uh, this is, and, and I like that it is a lager with, with a little bit of a twist. It is not a full tumble over the cliff. Yeah. It's just got that nice twist yeah. to it. Yeah. And usually when we do something as a as a as an extra aspect to a beer, it's, it's more light-handed. Mm-hmm. Uh, like it's a beer with something, not... A glass of something, right? Not a glass of marshmallow. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Well, this one is is yeah. There's no escaping the spruce in this. It's, right. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. But still, I think it, I think it's a unique flavor pro- profile that you obviously don't get a whole lot of because you have to really find these beers. And so I think it it would definitely draw in like hop heads because there's a lot of the same vegetal and you know bitterness yeah. to it. But, but at the same time, it. it it drew me in as well, right? And I'm decidedly yeah. not a hop hit. Well, the logger, the logger set the hook for you mm-hmm. there and pulled you yeah. in. But yeah. but it's all it's a I mean it's a fire pit beer. Yeah, that's an excellent you way know, of putting like it. Like that's the that that like the smoke porter, the the Lafroy barrel Scotch ale, mm-hmm. those you know, and or even our Nunkin if we're going to be you know basic about it. Uh, and uh, I'm okay uh, with that. <laughs> yeah. uh, those are all beers that I absolutely love by a fire pit at this time of year. Lots yeah, of all time drinking. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Cool. Man. But yeah, that's a good beer. Yeah. Thanks. So, well, let's take a break. We'll come back segment three. We have a little game planned. And we'll try another beer. Cool Sounds beer. like a plan. Right back. Are you tired of watching the same old awesome movies? Are B movies more your style? Then the folks over at They Call This a Movie have you covered. Join us every Thursday as we review the worst of the worst in sci fi, action, comedy, and more. We are available on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, and Podbean at They Call This a Movie.podbean.com. They Call This a Movie, testing the strength of friendships one terrible movie at a time. Welcome back, everybody. We are still live and on location here at East End Brewing. We are here with myself, Steve, and Scott is here. Scott, you are a beautiful human being. Not only have you provided <laughs> us with beer, but between the segments, you have also provided us with cheese. Good I, cheese. Good cheese. Yeah, we. Uh, I kind of forgot that we. I'd have I'd, I'd prepared. I'd let it sit out and and warm a bit. Had I had I thought about this was a very, you know, impromptu. What would be good with a smoked beer? 
Oh, I'm tipping our hand here a little bit. Aren't that's, that's okay. Fine. That's fine. That you can go right, right into that, too. Yeah. Yeah. All that's going to do is yeah. set the hook. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to draw more people in with that. But, yes, uh, we were able to get a little bit of a uh, preview of a charcuterie board, uh, if you want to call it that. Uh, uh, oh, daggum, there's some good cheese here. Uh, yeah, made from the people at Clover Creek Cheese. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. They're making some great stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, uh, I'm yeah, glad sure. I don't live near them because I would be 800 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm actually fortunate that I forget that we have cheese because I'm also <laughs> always so pizza, pizza, pizza minded <laughs> that I forget that that there's other cheese yeah. here. Otherwise, I'd be like raiding the, the cheese stores here in the off hours when we're trying to have that for service. Yeah, <laughs> wouldn't we all? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yes, as previously mentioned, some, some cheese needs to be paired with something else. That something else is beer. So Scott, what are we drinking for this time around? Uh, we have our Smokestack Heritage Porter, which is a, uh, a smoked porter that we've been making for, oh gosh, a number of years now. This is, this dates back to the old place as, as our first, first entrant into the smoked beer category. Is this the same recipe, or is this another one that has been tweaked and adjusted? Uh, there's probably been some minor minor changes to it. If you had this beer 10 years ago, you're going to find probably what you found in the, in the glass back then. Mm -hmm. uh, now, uh, maybe a little more refined. Um, our, our, you know, we'll take every advantage uh, to improve our process mm -hmm. that we can. It's like we have the same same conversation about Big Hop, like our, our flagship beer. Um, you know, we made 60 beers last year, but Big Hop is still 40% of what we brew. Oh, my. At nice. this brewery, <laughs> which is crazy. Yeah. Uh, that, that, you know, we don't even, but we don't even call that beer an IPA anymore. Mm. We, we call it an American ale. That's what's ah, written on the back of the can. Okay. Uh, because if you call that an IPA and that, if that's somebody's first impression of the beer, you've kind of not met that promise. Mm. I, I think what I see a, what you're saying. Because yeah. what, what an IPA was in 2004 and 2005, back when we had people saying, that beer's too hoppy. You yeah. should lay off the hops. <laughs> um, you know, it's called Big Hop. But no, never mind. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Did um, you read? <laughs> <laughs> the giant letters on the front of it. Yeah, so the question is, you know, do you change a beer? Do you update a beer for Big Hop when it's such a big part of who we are? We didn't want to create a, a classic Coke situation where people were after mm -hmm. or, uh, <laughs> the new Coke, or right. I'm sorry, the new Coke situation where people are after the classic Coke. Um, uh, so we decided, you know, hey, we're going to make plenty of other hoppy beers, um, mm -hmm. but Big Hop's going to kind of stop changing and and we'll make the process better. We'll make the beer better mm -hmm. if we can, but we're not going to turn it into a West Coast IPA. We're not going to turn it into a hazy. It's going to be a very malt forward. Today, we'd probably call a hoppy amber ale. Mm -hmm. uh, and so same thing with Smokestack here. You know, we're basically hanging on to this same recipe uh, that we did back when, um, where we've got a lot of beechwood smoked malts in here, Vireman uh, malt, which actually had to uh, had the privilege of visiting the maltery a, a couple of years ago oh, cool. in the before times to see where they make the... Uh, the, the, the smoked malts and how they make the smoked malts. Pretty uh, pretty amazing operation. Right. Uh, and this one actually has a little tiny bit of peat, peat smoked malt in it. Okay. Typically not something you'd want to see in a brewer's recipe because <laughs> uh, it's so intense and so, so sharp. But uh, in small, small doses, it adds a nice little bit of character to it. Yeah. And if you're already going all in on a smoked beer anyway... Yeah. You, you can dabble. <laughs> you can a little, yeah, yeah. Like, like, you know, but even like a, one sack of that malt in a, in a, you know, it's a distiller's malt. Mm -hmm. um, it, one sack of that in a, in a, in a batch here would be overwhelming. Yeah. And, and, and kind of hit you between the eyes. Wow. And, and that's, like, that's a Steve yeah. batch. Yeah. Yeah. I'm into that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, the, uh, you know, the term for, for smoked beers back, back dating to the, to the, the Bomberg's uh, uh, origins of smoked beers smoked beers and smoked malts, that was the, the fuel source you used. So mm -hmm. everything tasted a little smoky. All the beers were a little... You had a Hellas lager, and it was kind of smoky. Yeah. I actually had literally that experience. A, uh, <laughs> I'm like, oh, this is a Hellas. This is not a smoked beer. I'm like, eh, it's still pretty smoky. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a lot of smoke. You got a lot of smoke coming from the, either you're using the yeast over or it's in the tanks or whatever. I think, I think it's the tanks that they... I think it's just in the air in the town. Like yeah. Everything is just, you know, has a, has a layer of smokiness to it. Um... 
but that uh, but that peat smoke malt is uh, is way way intense. It's mm-hmm. it's you know so we use it in the single digits of percentage, like one to two percent oh, in wow. there, because because uh, it little goes a very very long way. <laughs> I, th- I think to use that on a five gallon homebrew level, you just yeah, sprinkle like, it in like yeah, salt. Like, like a, <laughs> yeah, you just whisper the words yeah, yeah. <laughs> across the top. And that's too much. Oh, you, said it too, you said it too loud. <laughs> Uh, yes, but uh, back to the the smoke stack or smoke stack, smoke stack, stack, and smoke stack. Yeah, uh, yeah, just on the nose. Oh boy. Yeah, a lot of smoke way mm. up front. It uh, it announces what it is. Yeah. Uh, before you get close to it, right? As right. it rightfully should. Yeah, yeah. 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 Let you know what you're getting into mm-hmm. before you get into it. Yeah, yeah. it um, makes no bones about what <laughs> it is. Yeah, we. Uh, um, Andrew, who uh, uh, runs our front of house here, he actually found a Wikipedia entry for. Uh, for East End Brewing, which is very, very dated. Mm-hmm. Um, lots of old article references and things in there. But he's like, I learned something from that article. I learned that Smokestack Porter was first brewed to commemorate the smoking the the, the, the smoking ban in Pittsburgh. Really? Oh, yeah. yeah. And wow. I, I completely forgot about that, too. Uh, that That's actually when we came out with this beer, uh, which was when, when bars went non-smoking wow. unless they had, you know, a tiny amount of food sales or whatever the, <laughs> the, the, the rules are. They're still smoking bars in the town, but, right, right. but, but they're, they're more of an aberration than a, right. than a, yeah, yeah. Than a commonplace. Uh, I say, that would have been a good day for, for a young Adam. <laughs> <laughs> the, the smoke-free bars and the smokestack on tap. And a smoked beer. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. 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 yeah, I'd have been. Go- I'd have gone home happy that day. <laughs> yeah. yeah, gone are the days when you had to like go home and change your clothes and mm-hmm. you know take a shower before you had to go to sleep so you didn't smell like like cigarettes yeah. the next day. Yeah. I remember the first day that I walked out of a smoke free bar, not you know having to dust myself off and all the yeah. smoke smell. Yeah. And I remember thinking, why haven't we done this years ago? Right. This is right. fantastic. Yeah, this is great. I, yeah, I, I remember uh, Kelly's Bar and Lounge, one of my favorite spots. You know. Uh, a mile or so from here, a mm-hmm. uh, place that has the, the hell with the lid off barley wine festival. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I remember Dan, the manager there at the time was like, I can't believe this smoking ban. This is bullshit. It's going to kill our business. And I'm like, you kidding me? I'm, I'm, I'm in. Yeah. I'm all, I, this, is, this is the only thing I don't like about this place. <laughs> yeah. is I stink More when I'm money. here. Yeah. And, and, uh, he kind of went, huh? Really? Do you think anybody else thinks that way? Like a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people think of that way. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people are going to uh, come back and enjoy. But tuck it, tuck it in the glass. We're okay. Yeah. 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 (laughs) Cool. Yeah. uh, Tasting this beer though, it is. uh, We already mentioned you know Bamberg, and obviously we're talking Schlenkerle when we're talking that. And yep. The this is a little different from what you find with their fare because their smoked beers often have like a bacony. Mm-hmm. taste mm-hmm. to them and this one's much more like bitter chocolate you know mostly because it is a porter yeah but yeah i get a lot of campfire out of this yeah mm-hmm. um um first time i tasted this out of the tank i'm a vegetarian i haven't eaten meat since like 1991 mm-hmm. not intentionally anyway mm-hmm. um and uh i remember tasting it out of the tank and i had this like horrific sort of reaction to it like like i was my body was like, wait, wait, don't, <laughs> don't do that. You're going to get sick. Don't have that. You know, that's associated um, with meat. Don't yeah, wait, wait, what are you, what are you doing? What are you doing to me? That bacon or ham, ham note, uh, was really, really strong mm-hmm. in that. And I think there's a, there's a, um, uh, I think this is probably about, about the process change for the beer. Mm-hmm. I think it actually has uh, a cleaner fermentation profile. Okay. Uh, the temperature is more rigorously, uh, controlled in what we do here. The yeast pitch rate is rigorously controlled. We know how many live cells we're putting into into a batch now uh, versus back at the old place. It was like, well, here's a bucket of... Here's enough. That's, 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 Welcome that's, to the that's, Wild uh, West. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, and that, uh, that I think the beer had a bit of a tang to it mm-hmm. um, back then, probably from fermenting a little high mm. or a, an over or an under pitch of yeast. Yeah, I think it's it's gone it's gone away from from bacon and more toward mm-hmm. campfire. Yeah, I, I will say, and I and I have an idea because we're all about ideas on this show. Mm-hmm. This would be a great anchor beer for a campfire flight. Here, it, start with a cider. Yeah, then work your way with the Elliot. Mm-hmm. And then finish with the smokestack. Nice. 
So, you know, you've got the early fire, everything's popping and cracking and stuff right, like that. Right. Then you got the Elliot with the spruce tips, you know, you're starting to get in some green wood, starting to get in some hardwood and stuff like that. Then you finish off with the smokestack here with the nice coals, everything's starting to burn down and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. The end of the night kind of thing. And, uh, yeah. You were talking about our fall tasting case. We've got a, uh, a yeah. mixed case that uh, has a has a bit of all of that in there. Right on. Um, actually, I wonder, do we have Elliot in that case? I'd have to look and see. Oh. We may not have Elliot, because Elliot's been with us for a little while. Mm-hmm. Hi, Elliot. <laughs> How are you doing? I hope you're doing uh, well. Little, that was a little weird. Um, <laughs> yeah, I know I know we've got Nunkin in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, that would make sense. And, that uh, would make sense. And probably uh, Britsburg. We may have Hazelwood in there. But yeah, I want to make sure. Yeah, I'm going to look at that. Maybe we uh, might need to update our fall tasting case if uh, poor Elliot was <laughs> left, out, <laughs> left out in the cold. No, no pun by, intended, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, I mean, and I think Adam's providing a good, you know, like secret menu tip possibly yeah. for people yeah. coming in, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, get, get, get a cider, get the Duncan, get the spruce, and then get the, uh, the smoked. And they get a smile on your face. Yeah, right, so that's, a good a, time. that's a hell of a flight. Right? Yeah, yeah. we can make that happen. <laughs> Treat we yourself. Can make that happen. I yeah. like that. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds good to me. I'm yeah. into it. No. Yeah, I'll buy two. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, it's segment three. And as always, segment three, we just have a little bit of fun. We don't have to flex our brains too, too much. And uh, I've got a bit of a game. I have devised a brand new game specifically for East End. Oh, Ooh, okay. Yes. <laughs> so we'll probably only play it here and we'll never play it again. <laughs> <laughs> but the game is simply the neighborhoods of Pittsburgh versus each other. <laughs> oh, boy. Wait. Yes. So <laughs> let me explain it, Adam. Okay. Cage, cage, right. cage match? Or, uh, <laughs> more, <laughs> more or less. But it's a <laughs> welcome to Yenzer Dome. <laughs> yeah, y- Yenzer Dome. We'll go with that. <laughs> but uh, it's going to be. Uh, Adam versus Scott. Okay. And mm-hmm. what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you two Pittsburgh neighborhoods. And then I'm going to read off a prompt mm-hmm. that would describe one of those neighborhoods. Oh. Oh. Okay. And then I will get it wrong. <laughs> and, and I will also get, get it, it wrong. wrong. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We got, we got it's it. only 50 50. You can't. <laughs> you would be surprised. It's <laughs> first one to chime in mm-hmm. and just you just yell out the name of the uh, neighborhood. Mm-hmm. Okay. And if you get it right, you get a point. If you get it wrong, you don't get a point. Okay. <laughs> I've, All only, right. I've only studied 50 or so of the neighborhoods here, so I am I'm way fine. ahead of me. So you're fine. <laughs> so you're, you're, you're fine. And, uh, yeah, uh, you can't buzz in after somebody else has got it wrong and answer because it's too obvious. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we can try, though. Yes. So at that point, I just say Dormont for all of them. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, I'm going to start you guys out easy, though. Okay. We're going to have an easy matchup just so you get used to the game and you understand it. And this is going to be Polish Hill versus the North Shore. Okay. Polish Hill versus North Shore. All yeah. Right. So I think that's a, uh, there's a fest beer and a, and a uh, latte cream ale. Mm. I'll, coffee, I'll, I'm, coffee I'm gonna, beer. I'll, that's all I got. I'm just giving context. That's fine. I'm just yeah, I'll, I'll review, so I'll, screwed. Yeah. I'll review <laughs> all these. <laughs> and if uh, if Scott is getting the beer styles right, I'm going to give him extra points at the Sweet. end. <laughs> yes. So screwed. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, uh, your first prompt is home to tailgating. North Shore. Yeah. Yeah. Scott yeah, gets a we, point. Do we? Yeah. But, like, you can, the, you can do that? an ant, or you can just whoop, yell. Whoop. The, you can right. just yell the neighborhood. Yeah. Scott gets a point. North Shore. Right. Adam, are you ready? That one was too easy. Oh, I'm ready. Okay. All right. Home to Gooskies. Oh, Polish Hill. Hill. Yeah, there you go. Adam got. Okay. That one. I didn't realize that that was. <laughs> yeah, you just yell. Are we doing the other side of the coin? Yeah. No. Oh, right. <laughs> I'm going to give you five prompts, and it's all. <laughs> Either or. Oh, oh okay. I see. Oh, right. I thought, okay. Right. I thought we were going on to the next pair. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, no, no, no. All right. I'm, I'm so this is a North now. Shore versus Polish Hill. Mm, yeah. Versus Goosey. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Versus Polish Hill round. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it. Got yeah. it. Yeah. Right. Borders Troy Hill. I'm going to say Ooh. Polish Hill. Incorrect. Oh, no. Troy Hill borders the North Shore. It's where you go up into uh, Penn Brewery's, the uh, oh, you're the, right, uh, the gateway. Ah, oh, daggum, uh, go up in yeah, that area. Yeah, yeah. All right, I'm losing all, right. all, all right. of my <laughs> user thread right. right now. <laughs> <laughs> you can see it shed off of me. <laughs> we'll sweep that up later. <laughs> Includes 16 flights of the steps of Pittsburgh, Troy Hill. Wait, 
<laughs> I'll ignore it if you correct it really quickly. Uh, Polish hills. Yeah, yeah Polish hills. Where the hills in the name. That's right. The, that's, the, that's the, yeah. Yes, yeah, so there are 16 flights right. in the steps of Pittsburgh right. running through Polish Hill. Martin Luther King Jr. busway runs through it. It's got to be Polish Hill. Polish Hill. Yeah, because I don't yeah. think there are any busways on the North Shore. <laughs> correct. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Very good. So, yeah. I was, still, nice. I was still on Troy Hill. Yeah. I was still, I'm, still, I'm still, I can't get off Troy Hill going down those steps. They repaved that. I'm all confused now. Well, good thing that round's over. The easy round is over. Oh. Oh, that Uh-oh. was the easy round. Yes. Oh, Polish Hill versus North, Shil- North Shore is over. North Shill. Yeah. Like North Shill. <laughs> <laughs> we are now moving on to something a little more complicated, but it's also closer to home. We're doing Garfield versus Friendship. Oh, Garfield this versus be Friendship. All right. Yes. All right. 13 flights of the Pittsburgh steps. Garfield. Scott gets a point. Borders Bloomfield to the east. Bloomfield's east? Borders Bloomfield to the east. Garfield. Incorrect. Friendship. See, this is why clarification <laughs> is needed. <laughs> There's no clarification because Garfield is north of it. <laughs> it's not an east or west. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> see, see all that Yenzer Craig going right out the window. See, see uh, if you if you gaze at the, the beer labels, there's a map of Pittsburgh. Uh, you, you could try. Have an advantage. Uh, you could try. I look over my shoulder and uh, see, if, there, uh, if there's any uh, Elliot. Uh, <laughs> Elliot, question. Elliot round coming up. We'll You're, uh, you got an advantage. Please, uh, thank way. you. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, home to two phrase. Oh, Garfield. There you go. Yes. Mm-hmm. Thank you for letting me have that one. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> we did a little mini keg ride. Uh, uh, our first stop was at uh, two phrase. Oh, uh, right just on. Like for, for beer week. Yeah yeah. yeah. yeah, it was really nice. Derives its name from the Quakers. Friendship. Ooh. Wow. Do you know why? No. Isn't that like loosely a <laughs> religious? Uh, uh, yeah. Where was I just hearing this? So I, I I don't know, but I'll give you this, I'll give you a little bit of history because I thought it was interesting. Friendship club or friendship? It's a the friendship Society of Friends. Society of Friends was a sect of the Quakers, and oh. uh, William Penn was a member of the Society of the Friends, as hmm. well as um, some of the children who owned the land after it was taken from the Delaware Native Americans. But oh. uh, they were members of the Society of Friends, and that they named it Friendship Market, which was on a corner. Okay. And then Friendship Avenue. Ah. And okay. then eventually the the obvious neighborhood took its I name as Friendship. I swear I heard the Quaker Friendship Connection earlier today. You might have. And I still didn't get that right. <laughs> I still, I still, <laughs> I still lost, the, lost the point. I would just assume you heard that through Rick Seaback somehow. Yeah. <laughs> like, who did I hear it earlier today? Who was I even... Mm. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I have a couple of beers in. It's all, it'll <laughs> come up to me tomorrow. Somebody from Friendship was just talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you just know what I heard about. <laughs> Cross Street of Olga and Harriet. <laughs> um, uh, that's... Uh, I don't know either. <laughs> Dormont. Yeah, okay, you, that's wrong. <laughs> I'll go Friendship. Uh, Scott gets a point. All right. <laughs> all right. Olga doesn't make its way across Penn Avenue? Okay. Nope. Huh. Today I learned. Yeah, I think mm. I believe Olga terminates um, terminates on Balm and terminates before Friendship Avenue. It's mm. kind of tucked on to some more little known, less talked about. Oh boy. Oh, good. <laughs> it's getting deep. It is. Yeah, we're getting into deep we're cuts into, here. Yeah. here. Yeah, now we're in the deep, <laughs> deep cuts. Mm, almost Esplin. <laughs> mm. Belts Hoover versus Wind Gap. Mm. Oh, boy. Bilt one Hoover. is a milkshake IPA, <laughs> and one is a West Coast double IPA. And one is on the tap mm-hmm. right behind <laughs> you. Yeah. 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 No cheating. No yeah. cheating. Yeah. Yeah. It's not going to help. No, no, it's not. Belts over and, and wind gap. Okay. And wind, wind gap. gap. Okay. Wind gap. Okay. Okay. Closest to abjuration brewing. Um, Bell's Hoover. I was nope. going to say Wind Gap, yeah. but maybe that's, that sounds like a. Well, sounds he like says a lost no, point. I'm like, oh, yeah. I was going to say the other one. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't matter. That's a lost point. Yeah. Uh, named after a tradesman who lived in the area. Got to be Bell's Hoover. Yep. Mm-hmm. Point for Scott. Wind Gap would be a weird name for a human. I don't know. Maybe it's Dutch. Wind <laughs> <laughs> Gap. Yeah. That'd be two A's, though. Yeah. Right. Wind <laughs> 
Elliot uh, has an extra T. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can spare a yeah. double letter. Who, who are we to judge? Right, right. Yeah. yeah. Hollywood Memorial Cemetery located here. Wind Gap. Yeah. That would yeah. be my guess. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Wind Gap. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, because I think we looked at, we were trying to find a place to, oh. re- to release the beer. <laughs> There's not a whole lot in Wind Gap. There's not a whole lot in Wind Gap. And then, and then, uh, and that beer came right at like mid March ah. uh, pandemic time. Ooh. And we were like, oh, what do we do? Skip. Let's, <laughs> let's not put all that draft into kegs yeah. right now. <laughs> uh, and we hold off for a week and then, yeah. And then the world exploded. And then we didn't need to <laughs> didn't use use that cemetery for yeah. a, a, a weird beer release. Yeah, <laughs> Wind Gap has a cemetery. It has carpet store. And I think it has a kindergarten, maybe close by. That's about it. Not That's a whole lot. It also has churches. Oh, well, I mean, it, yeah. So in terms of releasing a beer, not great. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. The school. Not so much. Not no. so much. Churches. No. Yeah. Maybe the carpet store. But. <laughs> Maybe the carpet store, yeah. <laughs> your, uh, your next prompt, though, is which neighborhood has more churches? Hmm. Belt Hoover. Sure. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I'll give you a point. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it is. <laughs> that feels earned. It, yeah. <laughs> sure. Yeah. yeah. I knew that. Obviously, Belt Hoover. <laughs> nice. is a, it was a literal five to one. Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. Wow. All yep. right. Originally farmland that was bought for $1,800 uh, equivalent. The $1,800 would be equivalent money today. Huh. I'd say belt over. And that is correct. Wow. Yep. All right, then. Because wind gap is pretty tree filled, but not yeah. that, not mm. that, I'm sure that was not, you know. Ten years ago, right? No, uh, no, that was <laughs> way of that time. So it's based on based on irrational <laughs> facts. Yeah, uh, and yet it still quotes. worked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was uh, two hundred and fifty <laughs> acres of farmland. That mm-hmm. was yeah, huh? And I think that purchase also might have included Mount Oliver at the time. Hmm. Like that, that whole area. I, I did not know that. Yeah. Wow. I hope Mount Oliver comes up on one of the subsequent rounds here. Nope. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, Dennis. I had, some good, I had some good arcane knowledge about Mount Oliver. If, if Dennis was on the show, I would have done Mount Oliver versus Fairywood because oh, he lives fun. in one and owns shop in the other. So, <laughs> I, I'm assuming he lives in Fairywood. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He. Yeah. Because uh, we 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 did a we did a beer release in Fairywood. Oh, okay. And. Um, there's like a UPS warehouse there. Yep. There's a Saloni's bread company yeah. factory <laughs> yeah. there. And then something else in that same industrial park. That's the and list. And that's about it. And so we released the beer at the bread factory. There you go. <laughs> in their lobby. <laughs> yeah. In their lobby. Oh, that's awesome. So like people coming off, you're like, what time shift end? Uh, three. Okay, we'll do the release at 3.30. Yeah. Come on out for a beer <laughs> after your shift. Everybody <laughs> wins with that. And everyone's like, we're drinking beer at the work? This is weird. Um, yeah, <laughs> super. It's a coconut stout, like just I with believe, the average. Yeah, I had that one. That Saloni, was really good. Saloni's bread employee oh, okay. would love a mm. coconut stout. <laughs> sure. Perfect. <laughs> I, uh, yeah. I can tell you, as a regular old dude, yeah, I liked it. Yeah. 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 I was a fan. Just a beer drinker. Just a beer drinker. Well, Mount Oliver is a super weird neighborhood in that there is a street that runs like the business district of Mount Oliver. Mm. And on one side of the street, there is one kind of parking meter. And on the other side of the street, there's another kind of parking meter. Really? And the reason is... If you look at this map, mm-hmm. and you see that little New Hampshire-shaped like, yeah. yellow spot in the white, like that little tiny... Oh, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's a little more visible here. I see that, yeah. So that is the, the hole in the donut. Mm. That is Mount Oliver. That's right, because... That is Mount Oliver Borough. Right. And then there is Mount Oliver City neighborhood immediately adjacent to it. Uh, and that business district runs right down the center. Uh, and so there's there's in the city, out of the city, and they have different parking authorities. Oh. It's super bizarre. I do only, not it's know a very that. only in Pittsburgh like That's oh it. here's I, <laughs> you mean Mount Oliver or Mount Oliver? <laughs> oh Mount Oliver. <laughs> what? That sounds like close to that dumbass uh Dormont Mount Lebanon split mm-hmm. too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, either way, they're going to get my money. Well, yeah, you, they'll take you either way. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, your last category, 
uh, heading into this, we're actually tied. Six points to six. Ooh. Oh, congratulations. Wow. Yeah. Very good. Uh, but this last category is two neighborhoods that actually haven't been featured. Oh. Oh. Okay. Uh, Expert mode. All right. I'm out, I'm out into <laughs> uncharted territory. Yes. <laughs> Welcome to my level. <laughs> right. <laughs> it is Bluff versus Carrick. Oh, good Lord. Oh. Bluff? Bluff. There's a neighborhood mm-hmm. called Bluff. I don't think there he's. Sure I think he's just saying that to. <laughs> Are you saying he's bluff us. bluffing? I know. Could be. I know. Could be. <laughs> uh, bluff versus, versus Carrick. Yeah. I'm not even sure where Bluff is. I have no idea where Bluff is. I think it's is. behind a thing. Like a, like a, like a, <laughs> could be on a hill. There's a certain like. Could a, be overlooking. It's, it's, so it, it's overlooking Duck Hollow. <laughs> could be. Could be. Could, could be. be. Very nice. Or you could be very wrong. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> we'll find out. I'll tell you at the end. Oh, all right. But uh, uh, formerly known as Boyd's Hill. I'm going to go with Bluff. Sure. That's a point. Sure. Sounds Good. hill shaped. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Now we're really <laughs> named, making connections. <laughs> named after an Irish town. Carrick. Yes. Yeah. It's like something longer and there's hyphens in it, but I'm not going to try to pronounce it. But mm. yeah. Yeah. The, uh, I believe it, the original owner of the, uh, of the land, his name was Dr. John O'Brien. And so he named it after his uh, Irish town that he immigrated from. Oh, mm. all right then. Yeah. Uh, it was named the first cool community in 1997. Carrick. Yeah. First cool community. Do you know what that is, Adam? Cool community? Yeah. Is that K-O-O-L? No, no, just regular cool. Okay. <laughs> oh, all right. Do, do you know what that is? It seems Not a clue. Okay, it's, it seems like something you might know because it was... Oh, thanks, Steve. I appreciate that. Well, yeah. <laughs> you know cool. <laughs> mm, no. <laughs> nope. Wait till you find out what it is. Oh. <laughs> it was named the first cool community in America because it, they started an initiative to uh, plant trees. Uh, so it was a Department of Agricultural, uh, I believe, like designation. Oh, okay. Because they, oh, they that's started cool. Yeah, it's cool. It's pretty cool. It's not Fawns cool, but <laughs> <laughs> you can. I don't, think, I, don't think the, I don't think the Fawns is Fawns cool either anymore. I think, <laughs> yeah. that, that, uh, I think that's Jump the Shark. No, sorry. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Damn it, that was good. <laughs> mm, it's terrible. terrible. No, it was fantastic. Don't, don't encourage. <laughs> and I will not hear otherwise. <laughs> As a pizza Milano. Carrick. No. Bluff. Yeah. Well, yeah, you wow. would be correct. But yeah. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> Woo. Yes. <laughs> and finally, has a disc golf course. What? Has a disc That's golf. That's got to be Carrick. That is correct. Oh. Carrick has a disc golf course? Sure does. There's a stack of them over there over your right shoulder. <laughs> I, I may say. have played that course. Maybe. I think I played Carrick. <laughs> oh, wait. Really? Is it a nine hole? Uh, I don't I don't no. know how I don't know the stats. Uh, PDGA <laughs> approved? Is it uh, what kind of baskets do they have? Uh, are the tee pads paved? Sorry. Well, well I, I don't know that much about that. We'll, we'll, <laughs> my, we'll sorry, tag them on Twitter. My my my, 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 uh, my my disc golf nerd is showing. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So I wouldn't have uh, I wouldn't have pulled that up. Yeah. So four rounds. And Adam, mm-hmm. you have Seven points. I'm very surprised at that. Yes, and Scott has nine points. Mm, I have, that last I have, bluff. I have a final neighborhood uh, hood neighborhoodery neighborhoodery. Yeah, neighborhood-er. it's like I'm trying to combine Jeopardy and neighborhood. Like and it doesn't sound like right. Fooder <laughs> neighborhoodery. <laughs> uh, I have a final Jeopardy question. If okay. you if you would like to take it on, you can. Okay. Um, but I don't know it's going to help you at all. I'll bet all my nine <laughs> points. I was going to go all seven. <laughs> all right. your, your question is, what is another former name for the Bluff neighborhood? Wow. <laughs> You've already put your wagers in, so mm. now. <laughs> well, then, we're going to be. Susan? <laughs> <laughs> um, for Bluff. Yeah. Wow. guess I'm at zero. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll be there with you. Um, I don't know. It, mm. Allegheny City. Cool. Yep. So the game ends in a tie of zero to zero. <laughs> Sweet. Well, welcome wow, to the bagel so shop. Good. Wow. <laughs> the, the hole of the donut. <laughs> the other name for it was Soho. Really? Yes. What? As is a image, an English immigrant had come and bought land and put up an estate. And because he was from Soho in England, he renamed this Soho in Pittsburgh. Oh. 
Okay. It seems uncreative. It really yeah. does. And, and repetitive. Right. To, well, uh, like, <laughs> I'm all out of names for places. What do I, I think I know of one? I mean, I, guess, I guess that's how we got New York. And well, the fellow from Carrick, mm-hmm. Ireland called right. it Carrick. It's almost like they yeah. ever presented the, the paperwork. Like, what are you going to call it? Uh, yeah. I didn't think about that. <laughs> yeah. What are you going to do here? Uh, it says here on your papers <laughs> yeah. that you're from Carrick. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Let's go with that. Let's call it Carrick. Yeah. Soho. That's not even like south of so anything. Well, sort of south. <laughs> I what? guess. Sort of south because the Bluff neighborhood sits along the Monongahela. Okay. And mm. it is basically home to uh, Duquesne University. Oh. That's in the Bluff neighborhood. Uh, really? Oh. And there's also a Pizza Milano there. <laughs> wow. I did not I know like that. I like the pizza theme running right. through this. Yeah. There's, there's, a, there's a thread. I, wow. wow. Yeah. I Huh. Yeah, that's the Bluff neighborhood. <laughs> huh. Technically, Duquesne University is on something of a bluff. It, that's true. That <laughs> is true. I've yeah. climbed those stairs before. And there, yeah. and there it is on the... Uh, so I'm looking at the... So we had that when we started this, there was this whole like, how many neighborhoods are there? Mm-hmm. Some sources said there were ninety three, other ones said ninety two, one said ninety, one had eighty eight. Oh, um, and I went to the the city of Pittsburgh's uh, web page on the matter, and of course the page was broken. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and uh, we we had a contact in the city. We reached out to them, and they sent us an official on on city letterhead. Um, oh. I'm able to access this quickly because we have uh, we have it up on our website on the mm-hmm. UR Here page, and uh, and and yeah, Bluff is a uh, is a legit. I, if you'd have said like, if you'd have done the done the quiz like, is this a real Pittsburgh neighborhood <laughs> or is this not a Pittsburgh neighborhood? I would have been like, no, no that's no, bullshit. No. That's Qu- no, quit lines. Yeah, that's not a yeah. Fairywood, yeah, sure, I can get Fairywood, but Bluff, no. <laughs> yes. Somebody also may have used that list himself to build the quiz. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> you found the... Uh, Hoisted the, by your own petard. There you go. <laughs> yes. Or just good resource. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I never knew that was a thing. Yeah. Yep. Hmm. Yeah, I, I, didn't, I didn't know the name for it myself before doing the research, but then I was like, oh, okay, I guess that's called Bluff. It makes oh, and sense. That's the, and that's the, I also see Deutschtown is one of those neighborhoods that's mm-hmm. not a neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, one of those neighborhoods that's not a neighborhood. Yeah. But sort of. But it's like East three Allegheny. Yeah. So it's yeah. a neighborhood. No. Nay. Nay, nay. Nay, nay. But yeah, so there we go. Game ends in zero zero. So everybody right. sort of wins. We, we uh, well, I could have told you the score of that game before we started. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. before we started, it was zero zero. Sponsored yeah. by the Pittsburgh River Hounds. <laughs> we accomplished Ouch. we accomplished Ouch. nothing, but hopefully somebody learned something. Right. I learned something. Right. Great. Then I did my job. You did. Very good. You did. Thank you, Steve. Awesome. Uh, in the meantime, though, let's come back to the beer that we're drinking, the Smokestack Heritage. Yeah, great beer. It is. I, I Thank can't, you. I can't come back to it because it's already empty. Well, yours is going, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I ducked out for a little top-up midway there. <laughs> it was that good. good. spot for me, too. Yeah. 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 yeah, great beer, great smoky flavor on it, but it has the nice kind of bitter and kind of chocolate notes on it as well. And like we already talked about, it doesn't have that bacony flavor, mm-hmm. even though I love that. That's, I mean, it's one of the reasons why I keep coming back to Schlin Curlo. But, but you don't have to have that. It's nice to have, it's nice to have a different flavor profile mm-hmm. on a smoked beer. So, yeah. Uh, with that, though, we're going to move on to the podium, and that's where we're going to rank the three, I guess maybe even four beers, because we technically had four this episode. How do we want to do this? <clears throat> you can give Ooh, double God. bronze if you want, but... Double you, bronze? Yeah. How, what, do you, how, do you, how do you rank beers that aren't in the same style category? Personal I guess that's taste. a best of, best <laughs> yeah. of show that's kind of round, or... Uh, yeah. That's mm-hmm. up you, for you to decide. You, yeah. you, you come up with your own decisions on how you mm-hmm. want to rank yeah. them. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, we just usually go bronze, silver, gold. So if you want to do a double bronze or a double silver, you can. You can do double gold, I guess. Mm. Ooh. But uh, uh, I'll go first, okay? Because I'm gonna I'm gonna do a double bronze. Okay. I'm sorry, but uh, yeah, the almost famous the the pickle beer is I'm gonna put it as one bronze, bronze A. It's it's a, it's nice and a refreshing beer, and it's 
it's a fun thing to have, you know, kind of like once a year. I think that it fits that kind of utility. Yeah, it doesn't well. work as a house beer for permitting. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> like yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. If you walk into an Applebee's, I don't think you're going <laughs> to be screaming for that. But if you walk into a Picklebee's, perhaps. Picklebee's? Ah. Yes. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> or or a Permanis, mm-hmm. you know. Right. Obviously, if you go to a Permanis, this is, this is a nice beer to pair with a Reuben, mm-hmm. and you'll have a good meal that way. But, uh, yeah, otherwise, I'm, I'm not going to be drinking tons of it, tons and tons of it. <laughs> um, same goes for the milk pour we had of the Pilsner, but that's just a personal thing for me that I don't love Pilsners. I like, I like this one more so than... Like other pilsners I've had in the past, the ones I'll take that, are, that. ones I'll take that are that. <laughs> ones that are they're like more flat and crackery. I don't love, but this one has you know just enough dry hop bitterness to elevate the flavor for me. So that's why I enjoyed it. Um, and I think the milk pour is a you know it's again it's a fun thing to have. I don't know why everybody was so upset about it. <laughs> it everybody likes to be Twitter mad. I guess everybody just <laughs> yeah. likes to be Twitter yeah. mad. Yeah. yeah. But I, I thought it was a fun thing to try. And mm-hmm. you also, like, you, you get that fun springiness with the foam. And, you know, it does have a different fro- flavor profile to drink just the foam versus the yeah. beer. And then you can mix them together and get another mm-hmm. flavor profile that way. So try it out whenever mm-hmm. you go to a brewery that has it. On to the silver, I'm going to give that to the Elliott Spruce Lager. It's a fantastic beer. I could drink a shitload of those. I don't know if everybody could, but I could. <laughs> I like I like that beer. I like that flavor profile. I like spruce in general. And that's also just an old holdover for myself, I bet, from enjoying harsh West Coast IPAs that had a lot of, you know, spruce. Piney note to it. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that is... Nothing gets pinier than a spruce right. ale. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's literally... Skip the hops, get right to the tree. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, Yeah. Yeah, really enjoy the Elliot, but gold is going to go to the Smokestack Heritage because it's a smoke beer and it's a porter. Those are all the things I like. <laughs> it's like I like smoked, I like coffee, I like chocolate, I like all those things. Uh, and this hits just enough of them that, yeah, it's a great beer. It's great for the fall time. It would be great with barbecue, get some ribs. Mm. <laughs> but, yeah, that's my gold. Right on. Uh, for myself, I... Uh, and I, and I say this a lot, but and I, and I mean it again this time. There was not a bad beer in the bunch. Uh, all of these are high quality beers. Uh, I don't think you would be disappointed with any of these. I will put the caveat on on the almost famous. You do have to like pickles to enjoy this beer. If oh, you, for sure. If you don't like pickles, don't get this beer. <laughs> Don't like stouts. One star. Yeah. Oh, God. Oh. Yeah. Don't get a pickle beer when you don't like pickles and then put one star on it. You're being a dummy. Yeah. <laughs> just, just just be cool. Yeah. Just be cool. Uh, but uh, I, I believe I am also going to go with the double bronze. Uh, and I, I, I will reflect what Steve said. The almost famous uh, is one of the bronzes. Uh, it's a good beer uh, for one or two times a year. Uh, but it yeah. is it is not a house beer. Sure, for sure. Uh, but it is it is a very well crafted beer because uh, getting it a, getting it on tap here tonight was good. It, it was fantastic to be able to have that beer. I've had other cucumber based beers. Uh, I like this one a little bit better. Uh, this one was bright. It was refreshing. If you like pickles, get at it. Get down here soon. I don't know that they have much left. Come get it. Soon. Yeah, this I think this is probably our last keg. Yeah, come get it soon. It's, it's 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 flying out the door in six ounce pours. Yeah, <laughs> and if you don't if you don't get it, taste your flights. It is your fault. Uh, the pills uh, with the milk pour. Uh, that's another one. I I'm gonna put in the bronze medal position. I like the pills. Uh, and and I, and I think with the pills simply because it was just you know six ounces worth rather than sixteen ounces ah. worth. But uh, it with the milk pour, it was a little bit different. It, it was a different angle, like we talked about earlier. You kind of get two or three different flavor profiles, which is different and new and something to try. Come, get it, try it, enjoy it. But it is only six ounces at the end of the day. Yeah. In the silver medal position, I believe I'm going to, and, and Steve, please still give me a ride home. I believe I'm going to go with the smokestack. Uh, mm-hmm. It's a very good beer. We had talked about how it is a fantastic beer for drinking around a campfire. Still completely agree with that. I could have two or three of those. 
However, the Elliot, I believe, is going to go in the gold medal position because I can drink more than two or three of those. Uh, that's the kind of beer that I could probably have a couple of four packs sitting in the fridge and just have me a day. It is a lower alcohol beer too. That's the other. That's the other. Yes. I mean, the smokestack's the biggest thing we've had here in this set. That's the only one that's uh, over. Is it over six? I think it's six five. <laughs> yeah. Six five. Yeah. yeah. And everything else has been five and under. Yeah. But uh, with the Elliot, I, that's one, like I said, you can have a couple of four packs. You can have yourself a day with it. And I probably would. Yeah. So uh, that goes in the gold medal position. Uh, but our opinions are not the opinion uh, that we're looking for right now. Uh, oh, this, wait. I have to hold on now. Hold on. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> Need to go across the record. It is time for you to rank mm. your babies. Oh, that's, that's, that's super weird. <laughs> um... It's your time to shine. <sighs> All right. Uh, 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 four bronze. Uh, easy decision, right? All four bronze. Lo- <laughs> 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 it's just like, you know, just a little, little self-deprecating, <laughs> a little like we can always do better. We can always do better. That is the absolute <laughs> correct brew uh, response. They can yeah. always be tweaked and yeah. twisted yeah. a little bit better. Can always be better. <laughs> um, I, I'll, I'll kind of speak generally maybe about the beers. I have a hard time ranking them, though. And so did I. Um, Don't worry. So did I. <laughs> um, I have enjoyed the pickle beer while floating in a pool in a hot summer day. Uh. And, and like, I'm going to drink another pickle beer. Like, mm-hmm. I gave one of these to my mother-in-law in that <laughs> setting. <laughs> and she was like, that's delicious. Yes. What, what is that? In the right setting, that beer... Can, that makes a lot can, of sense. Can, yeah, I, and you know, a, a chilly October day is uh, maybe uh, yeah. not the the ideal for it. But on a hot on a hot summer, uh, floating on a raft in a pool um, was pretty was pretty fantastic, and definitely it was memorable to me. Um, smokestack, gosh, I've had a relationship with that beer for a large number of years now, um, and I. Uh, uh, I think it's evolved a little, or I've evolved a little. It's kind of hard to tell um, uh, which one has moved, <laughs> if either has. Um, it's the, the Heisenberg principle, right? The, the sampling is, is impairing the, the measurement. But I still like that beer. I'm as excited about that beer as, as when, it, when it first came out. Uh, the Patonka Pills, um, cards on the table. That's all I want to drink right now. Okay. That's all. all right. That's my, when I, when I, my wife's like, are you having a beer tonight? I'm like, yeah, that's what I'm having. And I, uh, have a hard time branching out from that. It might take me like two Pilsners before I finally like go, okay, maybe I'll have a, something different tonight <laughs> or maybe I'll have a third Pilsner. Right. Um, uh, <laughs> there are no wrong answers. And that's the, that's the, uh, the, the general, general rule. And that's probably, you know, to a point where it's almost, Becoming cliche for brewers to be like, well, I just really want to drink Pilsner. Or I'm, uh, you know, or there's a there's a large number of brewers in the local the local uh, beer scene that uh, will bring hams to mm. a beer. Yeah, festival. <laughs> have right. you seen that? Have you seen that mm. yeah. uh, happen? <laughs> mm-hmm. um, fun fact: uh, hams is actually the same liquid as uh, PBR. That makes sense. Um, uh, and there's a guy in the local beer scene that has worked at those facilities hmm. and it's it's just a label change it's hmm. literally the same liquid uh, so if you I want if that. you like if you are a beer, if you like to have a a lawnmower beer in your fridge a pbr uh uh save yourself a few, a few bucks and and buy hams because it's about like a third less than the price. It's like seventeen dollars for a thirty rack or something like insane. Um, I actually went into a, a beer distributor and bought a bought a thirty pack of hams uh, a, a couple of months ago, and uh, picked up a six pack of Sierra Nevada Bigfoot mm. barley wine. Oh yeah, <laughs> same price. Same price, yeah. six pack, six, yeah. six, six, six 12 ounce beers or 30 12 ounce beers. Same price. Okay. I'll take, I'll take two. Um, question is, which gets you more tore up though? <laughs> that's a good question. That's yeah. That's a good yeah. question. Does it, does it include the exercise involved in all of the, the, <laughs> all the trips, uh, the liquid carrying? I feel like you'll uh, get way more tired mm. drinking the hams. Yeah. <laughs> Just get bored yeah. drinking hams. Yeah. <laughs> I can't um, lift my arm anymore. <laughs> Yeah, and then uh, uh, the spruce lager, I've kind of like, I'm always thinking about what we've got coming up next. I've kind of like neglected that little that little guy and uh, forgot that it was in our in our lager lineup here. And 
So that was a nice, nice to revisit a uh, friend that I haven't talked to for a couple <laughs> of weeks. <laughs> I guess I need to force a ranking out of this. We won't let you walk away without one. I guess I, I guess I got to put the pills in the top based on on now. Granted, that was not a milk pour. There's my I'm talking Just based on my fair. general fair. relationship with that beer, and uh, I'd probably put the smoke porter in there next. Uh, Elliot as a fun player and the almost famous because it's not summertime. Fair enough. Yeah, I can dig it. All that right, makes, that makes a lot of sense to us. Right. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah. I don't think there math. are any wrong rankings here. No, right. at no. all. No, it's all it's always just personal choice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, let me put a caveat on that. Almost always, uh, when we go into a brewery, it's mm-hmm. almost always. There have been sometimes that we've had like a handful of beers that are just terrible. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. that's yeah, <laughs> that, that is not this case. Well, and that's 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 great to hear. I'm glad you I'm glad yeah. you liked everything we mm-hmm. uh, we had tonight. The the. You know, that's one of the reasons that we work together as a beer scene. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's one of the reasons we work together as a guild yeah. to uh, to to help help each other, pull right. each other up mm-hmm. and and make the scene better uh, because we want Pittsburgh to be a beer city, mm-hmm. a beer destination mm-hmm. um, to have the same rep that other other beer cities that we have in our heads. I mean, right, everyone's right. thinking of like a handful of beer cities that they have <laughs> and I'm not going to say any of them because then I invoke, you know, uh, uh, polarization or whatever. Right. But, um, but we want people to be drawn in and when people come here and go, you know, like, wow, this is great. Where can I go get something to eat? Or where can I, where can I, where else is cool here? I will send people to other breweries, mm-hmm. you know, or uh, people come in and they get like, oh, we're visiting from out of town. We're like, oh, great. Can we stamp your passport? Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> oh, by the way, Come on we have a brewer's passport. I'm gesturing. There it is. A brewery guide. And this old thing, like, wow, that's great. And Guess what? We, we have a Pokemon the, game for you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Collect them all. Um, uh, yeah. And so that, I mean, that guide has been been just bonkers for uh, for the, you know, we sell those at cost. That's what it costs mm-hmm. us to make those yeah. and as a, as a guild. And we're, I don't know how many, like, you got to get 30 stamps to get the howler. There's lesser prizes yeah, of yeah. glassware and, and koozies and things. Um, but the number of people that are hitting 30, we've had a few people that have come into town for a weekend and yeah. hit and hit 30. That I'm is like, an absolute marathon session. I've, I've, I've not hit, I've not been to 30 breweries. <laughs> no. I mean, I, I go to I go to breweries a lot, but it's usually the same one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, that's a dumb joke. <laughs> but but, um, but it's but it's yeah, that's that's crazy to me. I mean, like we have guilt meetings or 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 in things. And I'm like, oh great, I get a chance to finally go to mm-hmm. X Y Z brewery. Yeah. Um, uh, but to be able to hit thirty, how, that's like in, a in a weekend is that's a that's a commitment yeah, yeah. Well, I, an incredible commitment. i applaud those that do that i don't know that i could do that no yeah no think, but it's nice to also at the same time be, travel with a purpose if you land right. in town and like oh my plans fell through what are you gonna do I, actually we had one one person like send us a long email saying well we came to pittsburgh there was going to be a wedding and then it canceled because mm-hmm. of blah 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 and covid and things and we're like well this is an option mm-hmm. and they proceeded to like just completely invest in that and bang, bang, nice. bang, <laughs> knock them all out. Like, it's amazing. That's absolutely amazing to me. Yeah. So. Yeah. We heard early reports or reports of that from 412, like way back a couple weeks, you know, the, the guide had only right. been out. Right. And then somebody, right. Yeah. They're like, like, like all, yeah, yeah. And they, and they each, and like they were, okay, so it's a couple. Are they sharing a book? No, no. They each got a book and they yeah. both did and it. They they were right together. They're like, wow. <laughs> More power to them. Yeah. 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 That's cool, though. Uh, with that, though, uh, Scott, why don't you just continue on? Give everybody any kind of uh, events or social media that you people can find you at. Just anything coming up that you want to talk about. Well, so the for social media, we're uh, we're. We're we're old, right? So we're so we were able to squat on uh, East End Brewing on all all uh, all platforms as they uh, as they were born. Uh, <laughs> we existed before social media, um, so we're just East End Brewing on on every place you'd want to find us. We're not on TikTok though. 
for yeah. the love of God. <laughs> not, not, not yet. I don't know. I, <laughs> maybe maybe the new guy on the canning line can specialize. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got a new side project. Um, Event-wise, you know, events are, are kind of in a weird place right now, as mm-hmm. I'm sure everybody is oh, already, yeah. already aware. Um, so we're, uh, we just had a, a few fun events for uh, Three Rivers Beer Week, uh, which is back on its back on its feet um, in this new and exciting form. Mm-hmm. Um, and so coming off the heels of that, we've got uh, a couple of neighborhood uh, releases coming up, one of which is Carrick, uh, named after mm-hmm. a place where a guy used to live. Yep. <laughs> um, and... Uh, <laughs> Uh, but spelled differently with more consonants. There was, or, a, there was or, more or, after it. It, it, okay. it was Carrick to something. I don't know. It okay. was more to it. But it was Carrick first. And then. Okay. <laughs> um, and uh, we've got a. Um, so, yeah, we're looking at a, at a release there and, and sometime in the next week or two. Um, we've got uh, some stuff planned for. Uh, we've got a. Uh, oh, we've got a, a Britsburg trivia night here. So, our, our pals at Britsburg, which is the home for all things British in Pittsburgh, mm-hmm. um, we're hosting a British themed trivia night here. Trivia Oops. night happens every Thursday here at the brewery uh, on the patio if it's not raining. Right. <laughs> uh, in this room, if it, <laughs> if it is, <laughs> it's free to play. You win stuff, including beer. Which is always always a fun. nice, yeah. a nice, uh, <laughs> enjoyable thing. And Drew does a fantastic, fantastic quiz for us. Um, uh, and then uh, Thanksgiving week, we've got some special stuff planned for um, the Wednesday before and the Friday, Black Friday, um, mm. after uh, some special beer releases and uh, um, uh, some special tap lineup stuff. Um, and we may actually be uh, relaunching brewery tours, oh. uh, which is something that we used to do. There was a time when we were doing brewery tours every Saturday with like, you know, selling out like 30 tickets on the brew side tour yeah um that went away when you know contact was problematic right to say the least um so we may be bringing that back uh and so for a lot of people that are out of town coming back home to pittsburgh we're hoping to get a tour tucked into the calendar there for the thanksgiving holiday cool. um and uh We've got a lot more to see on the other side of the brewing operation. So if you, even if you've been here for a tour before, <laughs> there's a whole canning line in there. There's a whole, you know, the place that uh, for people that have been in the brewery before, we used to have a big event space in there where we would we would do the Goodwood Fest or mm-hmm. uh, yeah. we had everything from square dancing to yoga to like all kinds of stuff. When that's all filled up with like brewing and packaging <laughs> equipment now. <laughs> so it's a little, you know. Uh, 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 tricky. Uh, even the Dirty Dozen uh, uh, bike race that just happened this past Saturday, we would host the uh, the the after party in the brewery, mm-hmm. and and the crew was like, why why don't we just do it in there like we did before? I opened the door, and they were like, Oh, uh. <laughs> oh, there's not. That's okay, why. <laughs> yeah, um, just a bunch of places for people to trip. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah. It's an OSHA nightmare over there. Yeah. Um, and then uh, and then into uh, December, we're gonna do our our our, our full case blow out again uh as we do during in, in, into the holidays to um uh do some sweet pricing on full cases of beer mixed cases of beer whether it's single varieties or mixed stuff nice try to uh, uh load up everybody for uh for the holiday drinking season ahead yeah. um, <laughs> if there if there is if anyone still has room for one of those after the last year and a half we've had um maybe we'll uh I, we actually have a uh um i don't know if we have one active right now i'm looking at the lineups of the beers on tap and the abvs we actually had a uh, a session ale tasting case for a while oh okay um we're like okay i know everybody's been uh going a little hard here uh, for a long <laughs> time so maybe january we'll have a, a, a easy does it case uh just to, to not necessarily to, dry but just back down just, to just, earth just less less damp first gear uh, yeah yeah um we got a whole whole bunch of uh, uh new package stuff coming up here in the next months ahead awesome awesome and as always, if you want to find us on social media, I, all you have to do is search Hop Nation USA. That'll get you Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Also, no TikTok for us. <laughs> Yet. 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 <laughs> Kelsey. <laughs> get on it. But uh, if you want to listen to brand new episodes of the Hop Nation USA podcast every Friday, as you should, then search Hop Nation USA in your favorite podcatcher like Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, anything that starts in pod or ends in cast. We're on all those platforms. We're everywhere. <laughs> it's all over the place. You can't not find it. The place is lousy with podcasts. <laughs> That's, That's right. right. 
<laughs> but uh, if you're on any of those platforms, leave a five star review because we are a sixth neighborhood show, but they only let us use 92. <laughs> <laughs> 90. <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> we know it's on the list. <laughs> That's a bigger crime than Adam not knowing what the list is. The list is 90. He's <laughs> speaking with a lisp. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, uh, thanks again to Scott for having us and sharing oh, my your beer pleasure. and yes. sharing your cheese. Yeah. This is a fantastic <laughs> time. Sharing your cheese. Yeah. Sounds, sounds, I feel like we've shared a special moment. It's we've had cheese together. Cheese. Yeah. Breaking yeah. cheese with people. That's <laughs> <laughs> what we're about. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, thanks again for having us. And uh, next week. We're off the road. We are. We're, we're back gonna, home. We're going to go back to the studio, and we're going to do something. Who knows what. But we're going to we'll let the bus, bus cool down a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Time to wind down for the holiday seasons, and that's where we're going to start batch recording. <laughs> that's right. Look out for our Spotify playlist. <laughs> and don't look for the news, because it'll be way off. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But until then, uh, thank you for listening, and we'll see you again next week. <laughs>